Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the LinkedIn Liveathon for the Experience Rich Job Seeker. If you, my friend, are age 40 plus, 50 plus, or 60 plus, and you're looking for a job, you are in the right place. And we are getting started right off the bat with our very first speaker today, Kenneth Lang. Hey, Kenneth, how are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. How are you doing, Brenda? I am great. I'm so excited. I'm so energized to be here. It's been, uh, we've been yeah. planning this behind the scenes for a few weeks now. And I know we have so many people that are watching and I put a ticker up on the screen right now. If you're watching this and it's live, could you go into chat and say, yes, it's live. <laughs> Let us know. It's almost like the mic tap, Kenneth, of the pre-pandemic yeah. days. And we'll be like, can you all hear me in the back? And then the people in the sure. back would wave and, and you would know. This is our way of making sure that the live stream is actually picking up. And I do have my LinkedIn and another screen in the background, and I see a lot of conversations that are happening, but it's kind of like my mic tap. And as we are getting started, I want to remind everyone we'll be going um, from 11 a.m. to about 3 p.m. this afternoon. Thank you, John, for saying audio. Yes, it's live. Everybody's saying yes, it's live. So we're, we're open and we're gone. And we're going to start right off the bat with our very first presenter today, Kenneth Lang, and he's going to talk about networking as an introvert on, on LinkedIn. So Kenneth, you and I met, gosh, online a few years back. Uh, you introduced me to Clubhouse. You were one of my LinkedIn rock stars. There's so many wonderful things. You're on our Friday group calls with us all the mm -hmm. time. Um, why don't you first tell us a little bit about who you are, who you help, and what you do, and then we'll kick it off into your presentation. Absolutely. Uh, my name is Kenneth Lang. I, As KML consultants, I've been doing, I started with one-on-one -on -one LinkedIn training during the pandemic, working with small business owners, as well as those in transition. And a funny thing happened. Um, I lost my job like everyone else mm -hmm. at the end of the start of the pandemic. So I said, I want to be go back and pay it forward. Having lost my job, been out two and a half years, I always want to pay it forward. And I'm now at Lehack Harrison as a brand specialist. And it's so wonderful to get all the feedback from people there and uh, listening to people and listening to their stories because I can totally relate. And yeah. as someone of a certain age, I get it. And I think it's so important to have that um, perspective. You've been through it. You've been through the journey. So I'm hoping to share my expertise. Um, any questions you have, feel free to reach out to me. I'll also be looking in the chat afterwards because this event does not end with my presentation. I recommend you stay on and off as much as possible or go back and watch the recording. And Brenda, thank you so much for doing this presentation. It means so much, I'm sure, to all the job seekers, but also to us because we have yeah. an opportunity to pay it forward to a lot of people. Absolutely. Well, with that said, I think we're going to go ahead and get you started here, Kenneth. I'm going to add your slides up to the screen sure. and I'm going to turn the virtual floor over to you, Kenneth Lang, to talk about introverts keeping up with LinkedIn. And I'll let the audience know I'm going to come back on screen at about 1120 and I'll be helping with some Q&A. So, Kenneth, take it from here. Thank you very much. Scott. Um, I am an introvert, first of all, so everyone should understand that this is something which is a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I do it because it's so important to do it. So I wanted to talk about how it is, how important it is to use LinkedIn for that. So again, for me, it's really hard. Um, I was that person that when I went to an event, I really was afraid to say anything. I was afraid to be part of it. And I'm hoping you feel better after the presentation, at least about yourself and about what you can do, because so many of us are just in our own worlds. And um, I think it's so important to have that perspective. So this was the way I was and still am. I, I loved staying inside. I was never the person that wanted to go to an event. I, I never wanted to get in touch with other people. But again, there's a difference between being an introvert in job search and in networking and being an extrovert because I'm pretty extroverted with my family, pretty extroverted with my family and friends. But in a presentation like this, putting myself out there, it does not come easily. But if you know who you are, that will resonate a lot. It's knowing that you are, and you can be a combination of both. You can be introverted at times, extroverted at times. So what I wanted to talk a little bit about today is how you can try to overcome that. First, obviously making sure that you are who you are. Um, as I said before, um, it isn't a good or bad thing. People are who they are. Um, you want to make sure that you acknowledge that. You know, when this presentation is over, I'm going to be on, on the chat, but I know later on today I'm going to be taking a power nap. That's who I am. It may not be you. I think one way I got out of my shell was, was talking to extroverts and learning from them. So, again, um, as, ease, as more at ease as I am with networking now, 
I'm still an introvert, but I get my energy, believe it or not, from more introverts um, and being part of that. You know, it's kind of like uh, the way it was. But LinkedIn was such a great resource for me because I didn't have to go to an event. I didn't have to show up in person. I didn't have to worry about saying the wrong thing or having to bring along someone who was my uh, point person. You know, if you go to a networking event like I did the first few times, I brought a friend. I brought someone along so I wasn't in a conversation by myself. So I had someone to talk to. And then when that third person came in, it made it much easier. So definitely think about that when you go in person. It's very important to know what to use LinkedIn for. It's great for research. It's great for the ability to measure yourself. But above all, it's a great way to put yourself out there and show yourself. So these are some of the basic ways you want to do it. You want to connect with people on LinkedIn. You definitely want to make sure when you connect with them, you have a frame of reference. Like a lot of people on this call, I'm sure you get a lot of the spam type connects your requests or as we would call on our business pitch slaps where right away they're trying to sell you something you want to be genuine and that's easy to do sometimes you want to start out by actually commenting on someone else's post as a starting point i've made some great connections that way i'll comment i'll comment on someone's post and that becomes an avenue to connect with them and it's just as important to have follow-up sessions my caveat these days though is not to send that follow-up right away you know, after you connect with someone, give it a couple of days or so. Think about what you're going to say. And asking for advice and help. That was probably the hardest thing for me in job search. I was actually on a call with someone right before this, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning from someone um, who just wanted my advice and wasn't looking for anything more than just an understanding. And I was probably as empathetic as I was, you know, going through the suggestions. It's being empathetic to the situation especially the last three years that's taught us that we can be more than just the job search person or the person that's actually um, has a certain hierarchy. So one of the best ways to start is think of LinkedIn as Google. Think of it as a searchable database, but just for job search. So if you look at the top here where there's a search bar, you can do searches by posts, by company, by people, by jobs, by schools. I love events. So if you do a search for some term and you look at anything, you're going to get some interesting, interesting things. I started out on LinkedIn when I did some, I would do a search for a thing like post or something like that. And I would get results and I would say, well, here's the layoffs. I would start to get a list of all the people or all the places that had layoffs. And I was just overwhelmed by that. I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to even make this easier? So what I did was I took that next step and I did a sort and I just did something for the last 24 hours. Just because you have posts or whatever, you can break it down further by how often the posts are. So if you're just looking at some content for the last 24 hours, it will make it easier. And the reason you do this is sometimes it's a starting point for a conversation. As an introvert, I'd be scared to death sometimes about what I'm going to say. And I might be scared about how I'm going to put myself out there. So maybe you don't want to create your own post. Maybe you just want to engage with people. Maybe you just want to be a lurker. And there's nothing wrong with being a lurker, by the way. There's a lot of people on LinkedIn that just lurk and look at content and don't get involved. And that's OK. That's OK as a starting point. Um, I recommend that everyone be on LinkedIn a few times a week for sure, but do it at different times of the day because not everyone is on LinkedIn at the same time. You know, if I'm here in New York, which I am now, it's 11 o'clock in the morning. It's eight o'clock on the West Coast, but it's also um, early afternoon, early evening uh, in England. So again, not everyone is using it the same way. And another hidden suggestion, if you connect or if you use the platform on the weekend, you're going to find people that are much more engaged. Yes, there's less people on the platform, but those people are much more engaged and much more willing to um to share with you. So again, another thing you can do with a post is you can actually start typing the name of the person in this box here. So maybe you want to see a post of mine. So if you start typing my name, I'll show up or Brenda's or Joey's or someone else. Because one of the comments I get all the time is the feed is going so fast. I can't find all, 
I can't find all the posts and it can be hard to save items. So sometimes if you make a mental note of who you want to see, go to their posts, do a sort by maybe the last 24 hours and then type their name in and you're going to see all the posts by them. And it's a great starting point. It's a great way to build some research. Again, this is all what a lot of people I find don't use LinkedIn as much for. Yes, it's a job search tool, but if there's any takeaway you get from today, this is about building relationships. Everyone on this call has something in common. You've taken a great first step here. And I think it's so important to take advantage of the fact that you have that network. And even if it's just, like I said, do some lurking, the more information you get, the better. But enough of that, I think everyone here has to feel a certain level of comfort trying to post something. And the big pushback I get, and I run a lot of different job search groups, is what am I going to say? Why is what I'm saying so important? Why should I put myself out there? It's imposter syndrome. What if I get knocked down? Well, guess what? Your value is just as important as anyone else's. So again, you're going to go to the post. You're going to select what you want to say, and you're going to start doing it. So as you start typing, if you use the at sign, people's names will show up. So this was something I actually did a while ago. And it was a question, how does an introvert network on LinkedIn? It's really hard for me to put myself out there. So any help would be appreciated. And I tagged Brenda and I tagged other people. So this is the way the post would look. How does an introvert network on LinkedIn? It's really hard for me to put myself out there. Thanks so much. Now this becomes, as um, Brenda alluded to before, like a mic tap. This is a called a digital mic tap. It's a way for me um, to Mike tap Brenda and Alex and others that I want to respond. Now, may, they may or may not respond, but I'm going to reach out to people I have a good feeling will respond. And the one thing to keep in mind when you do a post and you tag people is don't over tag. Don't put 30 people on the post because you think 30 people are going to respond. LinkedIn will give you a slap and say, you know what, this is just a, a case of spamming. But it's all about engagement. And you don't have to think too much about what you're going to post. If you have a job search question, there's no reason not to put it out there. You have millions and millions of people on this platform who definitely can take advantage of what your skills are. So this was the finished post I did. And again, when you do an article or something, you do a post, you're perceived as a subject matter expert. You know what you're talking about. But a lot of questions come up again. I don't know how to find an article. I don't know where to do this. It's not just on LinkedIn. So I would recommend you set up a Google alert to use keywords. And how you do that is you go, and I'll show you in a second how to do this, but this was a very relevant post that I did about how um, you post on LinkedIn. Nancy put down how frustrated it was for her. She was one of my first connections. Um, she felt awkward about attending a Zoom meeting. And three years ago, Nancy and I had a conversation on LinkedIn. Um, and I said, let's just have a, a session every week and let's invite people to attend and let's see what they have to say. Well, three years later, that session has evolved to lots and lots of people. So I think it's so important to put yourself out there for sure. And it was a very easy post to comment on. So as I commented on the post, other people commented and I started connecting with them because I had that frame of reference. And again, what also happens is if you answer a question, you get tagged in a post. So what I alluded to before is Google Alerts. If you don't know how to find content, this you go to Google Alerts and this is clickable. And these are the steps to follow. In the box at the top, you'll enter a topic you want to follow and then you can do an alert. So if you don't know how to find content or if you want to do some research, I recommend a Google alert. So as an example, I did one a while ago on career advice tips. And debate, depending on how you set it up, whether you want the alert to go every day, every week, every so often, Google will, will scour the internet for content. And you can use that content as the basis to comment. Maybe you want to connect with the people there. There's so many wonderful things about that. And there's so many free tools about using it. Another great source is if you go to LinkedIn, top right side of your homepage, there's today's news and views. You may 
want to comment on something. It's a good way to start engagement. And this day here, again, our tattoos about career move, where millennials spend their cash. And it's even possible <clears throat> one of your comments could even be picked up. But again, this is all from, a, from an in introvert's perspective. I just want to get research. I'm afraid to take that first step. So I'm going to look what other people are saying, and I'm going to say something there that's going to be relevant, but I'm only part of the conversation. I'm not the center of attention. So just as a reminder, LinkedIn is not a substitute for any of these, this stuff that we're doing. It's a building relationship platform. You should be attending events. You should be working with an accountability group, um, attending in person or online. But what most job seekers don't think about is that they should be not just in job search, but they should be branding themselves, portraying themselves a certain way. If you're looking for a job in a certain part of the country, you got to let sure people know that. If you have certain skills, same thing. If you're available for remote, um, there's a big discussion on LinkedIn about the numbers. Do not worry about the numbers. It's not how many people are viewing your profile or how many people are commenting in your articles. It's the quality of the people. There are people that get a lot more views and a lot more engagement than me. It doesn't bother me in the least. And even recently with the whole idea of artificial intelligence and um, profiles and things like that, try to turn off the noise, be aware of it. You are yourself. You do the best that you can. So I always say this is one of my things. I say, come on, dive in. The water is fine. Take the plunge on LinkedIn. And the analogy I make, and it's a true story for me, is when you go the first time and it's Memorial Day weekend, so a lot of us are going to be heading down the shore in New Jersey, we don't say down to the shore. Think about going to the ocean, the water is really cold. So you're gonna dip one toe in first and then maybe dip another toe and then maybe your feet and maybe eventually you take the plunge. The difference is that this prospect, this process may take days or weeks to do. So maybe you're comfortable in the beginning lurking and maybe for a little while after that, you're gonna start engaging, but you will you owe it to yourself to take that on and i recommend that you start slowly with people you meet here everyone on this call who's listening and has that commonality so go back to the chat and look at that again following up with connection requests is so so important you want to also schedule some time to speak and meet virtually with anyone don't be afraid to ask for help be specific though asking me to help you find a job is not going to help me. If you need an introduction, if you want specific advice, that's going to be a key because you want to make sure that you are not only accountable to people you're going to reach out to, but accountable to yourself. And attending an event like this, you guys have taken a great first step. Even if you're just here to listen, be a fly on the wall. I met Brenda attending one of these events many years ago. I heard about it on LinkedIn. And I thought, this has got to be a great thing. This is going to be great for my, at the time, it was job search, actually, because I hadn't decided then um, after I lost my job that I was out for good. And I got so much amazing voice. But above all, I met so many great people who are willing to chat, who are much more than just um, people on the conversation. So I want to thank Brenda, my fellow presenters, and all of you, what you do to support others. Um, I do weekly online events. I'll be doing my next one next week and in june we are celebrating three years of doing these which i never thought could ever happen uh, i didn't think it would be possible for people to care but brenda i am so proud to be a member of your vip uh, team connect with me on linkedin but above all be yourself introvert or extrovert we're all in this together absolutely wow so many great pieces of information gems that you shared with us there today Kenneth and I want to invite um, the folks that are watching I'm seeing some people already doing this but I'll give you a, a few reminders uh, uh, playing upon what Kevin was uh, what Kenneth was saying <laughs> rather first of all make make sure you introduce yourself in chat because there are recruiters and there are hiring managers that are watching this right now you never know when you're going to come across somebody who who might see you and say, hey, this is somebody I want to hire for my company. So don't be shy about doing that. And check out Kenneth's events. Every Isn't it every Tuesday at 1 p.m.? Every, every Tuesday yeah. at 1 p.m. 
and where we do some in-person events now too but even if you can't attend the event watch the recording and i recommend the same thing with the friday events that you do brenda there's mm -hmm. so much great information and it costs nothing to attend and you never know where it's going to end up look i ended up with you brenda after being uh, one of the many guests here many years ago i thought i was scared to death when i connected with you actually i was so afraid of rejection and it's a true story um, it, it, it it makes me smile when you say that because i'm like who are you scared of? It's not, it's just me. Like, I'm just like, I'm just like you. We're just people. We're just, you know, we're just people is all we are. Right. But I'm, I'm, I can be my own worst enemy that way, overthinking things. That's, yeah. uh, that's just the way I am. But I'm like, after that, I'm like, this really isn't so hard. So think about that mindset when you do this for sure. Yeah. Well, I want to make sure that um, you'll be dropping. I think you'll be going into the, the chat after you'll be dropping the links in there. I'm going to put the Friday VIP call link inside chat. And look, the people that are watching that are part of our Friday VIP community, I'm going to give all of you a shout out. And I want to want to remind those individuals that in between presenters today, people that are in my Friday VIP call, I'm going to invite you to come onto StreamYard with us and we'll do like a 15 to 20 second introduction of yourself. You all know what I'm going to ask you for your targeted job title, your targeted geographic area, and then you'll be putting some comments onto the chat so people can connect with you. Um, I want to invite our audience, if you do have any questions for Kenneth, we're gonna do some, some Q and A with him right now. So feel free to drop your questions or comments about anything that Kenneth was discussing. Go ahead and drop those into chat and we'll do some questions now. As we're waiting for those to come in, I want to go back to one of the phrases that you were talking about, Kenneth, when you said people are lurkers. People lurk on like I like to call them readers instead of lurkers. Because okay. lurkers, it sounds like you're looking around me at the corner. <laughs> like readers is really what a lot of people do on LinkedIn. They come on and they read, but they don't click and they don't like and they don't comment and they don't post. But it's it's just it's a slight variation. It's like instead of saying mature job seeker, it's saying experience rich mm -hmm. job seeker. It's a slight variation of that. I hope you don't mind me kind of jumping in and giving that. <laughs> no, no, of course not. Of course not. No, yeah. never. Um, and I'm just waiting to see, and I see a lot of people from our VIP job seeking community that are in here. And Joan, who's one of our later speakers, who's going to be in uh, jumping in here as well. See a lot of people identifying either as introverts, extroverts. They're kind of mentioning that inside chat. Um, I'm just scrolling through, and you know, if if you do have any questions for Kenneth, or if you're an introvert, or if you're maybe you're a little nervous and you don't want to say I'm an introvert, you can say I have a friend who's wondering. Absolutely, right? <laughs> that's a great thing when you do a post. You do that all the time. I'm posting yeah. for a friend. A right. friend wants to know. Yeah, Very honestly, great. most of the time when I am posting for a friend, I am posting for a friend. I'm like, I I will post for people so that they don't get swarmed by salespeople. I'll 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 let the salespeople swarm me, and then when they do, I'll say you got to go in comments. You got to put it in comment because I'm directing my client to the post that's inside here. Um, but I I want to in invite our job seekers. If anyone would have a question for Kenneth, don't be shy. Feel free to drop those into chat. And chat is like lit right now, Kenneth. Really? I'm trying to, I keep, I'm like, well, I don't know why by calling you Kevin. I don't know. I know your name is Kenneth, but my head is like, it's the adrenaline of the LinkedIn Live. <laughs> I, think and in I will get to as many of the comments as I can. I'm leaving this conversation, but I will be a part of this all day. So, yeah. and um, because I think this is such an important event and I'm still learning stuff too. Mm -hmm. That's the important thing. I'm always learning from everyone. And yeah. the day you stop learning is the day you're not around. Yeah. So I see one comment I want to address and then we'll go on to the other one. Um, Stephanie is saying, hey, how many others watching are 40 plus that are pivoting their careers like me? I mean, that's what you did, right? Kenneth, you pivoted your career. Many, many, many probably four or five career pivots over the years. And sometimes you have to ask yourself, what are the skills I have that are transferable within reason? That's my yeah. caveat. Like I, mm -hmm. I have transferable skills, but there's no way in heck I could ever work for Meta or, Meta or Google or something like that. But you also want to ask people who are in the field you want, ask them how they got started in the field. Ask them what makes them tick. You know, people love to talk about themselves. People love to talk. So don't be afraid to take the chance, but they'll tell you if it's not right for you. I mean, they may be honest in a way that someone that, again, we'll be, we'll be honest as much as possible. It's better, better to hear from someone who's in the field. Be pointed and ask questions like that because people will be honest. They don't want to hire people that aren't qualified. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. 
And yep. um, so many of us, and I think myself included, kind of, if someone had told me I'd be doing what I'm doing now when I was working in corporate, I would have said, you're crazy. I'm never going to leave corporate. I'm never going to do the thing that's that would, you know, it sounds appealing, but I, I never would have had the courage to. So yes, Stephanie, many of us are like you. We've pivoted. And there, there are many others that are watching that don't know they're going to do a pivot yet. And, and maybe this will bring that up to them. Um, I see Joey is in the green room. So Joey's our next speaker. I'm going to bring Joey up on screen just for a second to say hi, Joey. Make sure you can hear us. Can you say hello? Hi, Lee. Hi, right. Joey. Long time no see. We actually met in person a couple weeks ago. It was so cool. Yes, we did. Fun. All right, Joey, I'm going to put you back in the green room. We'll be bring you back on in just a few moments here. And I see a, a comment from um, Paul Anthony coming in. Experience rich, Kenneth. And he's saying, is that perpetually jobless? Now, you know what I mean when I say experience, Rich. What do you think, Kenneth? No. You know, everyone is always in transition in some way, shape, or form, mm -hmm. even if you're working. Experience, Rich, means you are sharing experience that you have that others don't have. And it's things that, that people don't necessarily equate as experience. But it's so important to be able to, to do the coordination and run the meetings and know what's important and what's not important. And you may not be appreciated by it one company, but you find another. Or maybe the answer is you work for yourself, or maybe the answer is you work for a smaller business. You know, there's all different opportunities. I think a lot of job seekers do the same thing all the time. Mm -hmm. Here's the top companies. I'm going to be that one person out of 500 to send a job. Why am, why am I not getting hired? Yeah. Well, sometimes you have to you have to change it up, and sometimes you have to be willing to accept that. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. Well, there's more questions and comments coming in, but I've got to start to move us off onto Joey. Before I do so, I do want to share my screen, which is showing your LinkedIn URL. While that is coming up on screen, Kenneth, could you just remind people, are you open to connecting with people on LinkedIn? And if so, do you have any preferences with regards to how they connect with you? I, I would love it if someone could just put a note that you're on this session today, just for a frame of reference, because a lot of times it's hard for me to know just mm -hmm. as a starting point. And then if you want to ask me anything specific about what I can do to help you again, it's the little things. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I don't know. Um, I, I can't be a mind reader about things. It's not that I don't want to be. Um, what I've learned is to be very curious. I'm very inquisitive about what I, what I want. And again, I'll be honest, not brutally honest necessarily, but, but you want to have hear from someone like me or someone like Brenda, that there are things, and we we kind of call it amongst ourselves like a little bit of spinach in the teeth sort of thing. Yes, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like we're, we're going to be honest with you, but in a way that we want you to understand that we have best intentions. You know, we're yeah. not gonna we're not gonna shoot anyone down because that's what. And I consider everyone here a networking friend in some mm -hmm. way, shape, or form. I mean, we haven't all met, but we're all we're all kind of going through this journey together in different ways. Absolutely. So if you want to connect with Kenneth, um, because Kenneth has creator mode turned on his profile, when you visit his profile, you're going to see follow. So what you'll want to do is click under the more button, and then you'll see an option that will say personalize invite or connect. And just mention that you saw Kenneth on the live event with Brenda, just name drop me, and then he'll be like, okay, I know where you're coming. And then I, I am offering a 30, a 30 minute conversation with anyone that wants to have a LinkedIn pro, pro, profile review, that's going to be you know, shared it later on. So again, yeah. mention that as well. That'll definitely be a starting point because all we want to do is help you. That's mm -hmm. all that's that that's what we're looking to do. Yeah, awesome. And on that note, too, I want to remind uh, uh, everyone, if you want to get access to all of the playbacks, I'm going to clip out each of these videos in 30 minute segments, and then I'll be sharing all of the presenter resources with all of you. Kenneth just, meant, just mentioned the 30 minute call. He also talked about his Tuesday groups and whatnot. Um, you'll have to sign up at mellermarketing.com slash Lil Rich, L-I-L Rich. So the L-I-L stands for LinkedIn Live. And the rich stands for experience rich. And I made it a little shorter for you to be a little easier to type in. So just remember, mellermarketing.com slash L-I-L rich, Lil Rich. And then you'll get access to all of the playbacks. And anything else, Kenneth, um, if people are interested in working with you, um, can we do so? Do you offer one-on-one -on -one or tell us a little bit about that? Well, I used to offer a lot more one-on-one -on -one than I do now that I've, I'm actually working now at Lee Heck Harrison. So mm -hmm. my time has been a little more limited, but I'm happy as a follow-up. If someone wants to work with me, please reach out to me. Um, what I find is that, and this is a perfect example, I didn't expect to go to Lee Heck Harrison. I, yeah. I did not expect three months ago that I'd be doing all this. And it just happened because it was an interesting thing for me and I enjoy doing it. So you never know where your next, your next experience or your next journey is going to be. That's just yeah. life. 
That's a good point. Well, Kenneth Lang, thank you so much. This has been such a delight. And I'm, I know Kenneth is going to be moving into the audience um, to keep mm -hmm. answering your questions. So thank you again, yep. Kenneth. And I'll see you. Will I see you on Friday this week too on our office hours? Um, you probably will. Okay. Um, yes. It's a holiday weekend, so if you can't make it, I understand. Well, but always no, I, may, I may have my birthday hat on. Of course, I'll see because that's uh, right. You got a birthday coming up. Happy birth, happy early birthday to Kenneth. I think you said it's in two days, right? It's on May twenty seventh. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Right, well, thank care. you so much, Kenneth. I appreciate having you on today. Thanks a lot for the opportunity, Brenda. Good luck, Joey. All right. Thanks. Take care. Hey, all right. We're going to keep us moving along. Um, what a great presentation. By the way, if there's any key takeaways you took from Kenneth, drop them into comments. That way people that are coming on later can see what we already talked about with Kenneth Lang. And we're going to change gears right now and move into our second presenter, Joey Himmelfarb. And Joey, you and I met through, I remember you from Clubhouse. I remember we get into conversations and I remember you were talking about, uh, you, you would have a question and I would say, well, why don't you say I, I have a friend who, and we, were, we would banter back and forth about that. And today you're going to be sharing some tips with, with us about selling yourself as an experienced rich job seeker. Before you do so, Joey, why don't you take a few minutes and tell a little bit about, tell people what you do, who you help, if you could. Okay. So I, I've been supporting, guiding, coaching, influencing job seekers for the last 20 years or so. Mm -hmm. uh, born, and bred in, born and bred in New York, born in Brooklyn, raised in Yonkers, went to school in Buffalo. So I'm a true blue New Yorker and I'm in your face. But having said that, I've learned that sometimes it's not so good to be in your face. And I've learned that when I'm dealing with job seekers, it's sometimes better to hold back and let people say what's on their mind and let them speak. Because what I've discovered over the years is that there are some people that are upset and they're really in dis despair and despondent. And uh, I've been in sales for a very long time. And I learned that when you're looking for work, you're actually selling yourself. And I think what I've, disco what I've discovered is that a lot of job seekers who haven't sold, who, have, who don't think that they're salespeople are learning that they are, at least after they speak with me. And, and what I do is I try to bring to the table the science of selling, because there is a science to selling. I mean, people go to school for sales, but there's also an art. And so there's an art and a science, and there's a right way to sell and a wrong way to sell. And as a customer, we all can attest to those circumstances. And as a salesperson, I can attest to those circumstances. So what I've been doing over the years, and I wrote a book about it, um, and I'm writing another book about it because it's like a tattoo. Once you have it, once you have a tattoo, you want another one. Yeah, thank you, Brenda. Yep. So I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So uh, I wrote that book because I've been making these presentations to unemployed professionals for the last 20 years, all around all around Jersey, and. Um, People would say to me, "Where's your book?" And I said, "I don't yeah. have a book." I said, "You should write a book." So I finally wrote a book, and there it is. And and in it is really a, a dis distilliz distillization of what I've learned over the years. And I'm still learning every day. I don't have all the answers. I'm not a know-it-all. Every time I learn something new, I realize how much I don't know. But <laughs> what I've learned, what I've learned, is that there are a lot of people who are going about the job search. I don't want to say the wrong way, but it, there are better ways. They need and, some guidance. All right. So with guidance. that said, Joey, I'm going to remove myself from camera. So I give you the full screen and I will be back in about 20 minutes to start to do some Q&A. All right. Thank you, Brenda. Here okay. we go. Take the floor. Thank you very much. So as I was saying, it, I, I people need some guidance, some support, some coaching, if you will. And I've been doing that, like I said, for the last 20 plus years. And let me share with you a couple of things that I've learned. Again, that I've learned. A lot of these are not mine. These are available to everybody who's watching this. You can find all this stuff either on Google or YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. I mean, it's all, you know, everything's out there. It's just people are repackaging it. And, and this is my way of repackaging uh, for job seekers that, in fact, you're selling yourself. And, and again, there is a right way and a wrong way. So right off the get go, if nothing else, if you don't remember anything else from what I'm about to tell you for the next 15, 20 minutes, please remember this. When it comes to selling yourself. The irony is it's not about you. It's about them, the customer. In your situation, if you are a job seeker, your customer or customers are hiring managers, people that are going to hire you. And so they don't care that you're unemployed. They don't even care why you're unemployed. They don't care how many wives you have, how many children you have, how many bills, how many cars, how many homes. They don't care about any of that stuff. All they care about is, can you do the job for them? And will you fit, excuse me, will you fit in? Uh, that comes to you. That comes from you selling yourself, but you can't be 
groveling and you can't be saying hire me because it doesn't work that way. Because while they're speaking to you and listening to you, they're thinking to themselves, what's in it for me? What is this person going to do for me? And it's your job to show them what you can do for them based on where you've been and what you're doing. And if you're experienced rich, I got to believe you have an arsenal of experience behind you. Having said all that, please, from the get-go, you've got to be positive. <laughs> that's, and that's my mantra. Positive beats negative every day. Because if you're positive and you don't have the skills, okay, there are some employers who will hire you and teach you those skills. But if you're a Debbie Downer or a Toxic Tony, I don't care what you know. I don't care what skills you have. I'm not bringing you into my organization. You're not going to be the bad apple that spoils the bunch. And so you got to be positive and upbeat. I know it's a lot, I know it's easier said than done, but you, you got to do it because you got to be positive. Nobody wants there's enough negativity on this planet for everybody and then some. And you don't need to be that way. You need to be positive and upbeat. And along those lines, you need to be polite and persistent. And I'll get into that later on. But at a minimum, please, it's not about you. It's about them. And you got to be positive above anything else. Because once you're positive, now things start to happen. Now, all of a sudden, hopefully, you're open to possibilities. You're not thinking, woe is me. The world stinks. I can't stand the economy. The politicians don't help me. My spouse is a pain in the noogies. My kids don't listen to me. The market is tumbling. As, as Ken was saying before, none of that stuff you have any control over. All you can control is yourself. And Ken made a great point, and I talk about it a lot too. To thine own self be true. Now, granted, Shakespeare said it first, but you've got to be yourself. But if being yourself is negative, you've got to nip that in the bud. You've got to be positive and upbeat and become open to the possibilities that are out there. In the world of improvisation, when people go to school to learn how to improvise, they're taught, don't say yes, but say yes, and. And if you watch an improvisa improvisation troupe, you'll see nobody challenges what the next thing is to do. They always say, okay, and here's what we're going to do next, right? So they build upon the story. Same thing with you. When you hear advice or you hear suggestions and you say yes, but, you're you're dead in the tracks, right? You've effectively told yourself, yes, but this, I, I don't want to go there right now. That, believe it or not, that's an evolutionary response from way back when, when our ancestors, God bless them, were seeking and searching and hunting for the saber-toothed tiger. They had to pay attention to all the dangers that lurked because if they didn't, they'd be the dinner for the tiger. Well, it's 2023. I, we don't have to worry about saber-toothed tigers anymore. Now we have to worry about ourselves and how we think and how we feel. If you're negative and downtrodden and a Debbie Downer and a toxic Tony, that will pervade your DNA, that will pervade every cell of your blood, and that will come evident when you speak, when you write letters, when, everything you do that presents, as you present yourself to the world will come across as negative. Nobody wants to be around a negative person. It's not good. It's not a good thing. So be open to the possibilities. Look around you, right? I know maybe you've been an accountant for 25 years, you were laid off, and you want to continue doing that. Well, you know what? That may not be your best option. You may have to go somewhere else, do something maybe similar, or maybe something totally different. I don't know. But you know what? It's 2023. It's a brand new world, right? It's a brand new world. I, I'm preaching to the choir. You know all this. Right? And I'm just as guilty. Believe me, I have negative days. Trust me. It happens, right? We're not machines. We're human beings. But because we're not three years old, we need to be responsible and take advantage of the fact that we're not three years old and we can be responsible and we can literally stop ourselves as we go down that rabbit hole of woe is me, the world stinks, the economy blows, I can't stand the politicians, the traffic is for the birds, all that stuff you cannot control. You can control how you think about all those things. And the fact of the matter is you can't control all those things. All you, can show, all you can control is how you feel and how you present yourself, okay? So be positive, be upbeat, and be open to the possibilities that are out there. It's a new world, right? So you, there's a lot of stuff going on out there. Be patient and just be open to it, right? In fact, do this. When, when you do your normal errands, when you have to leave the house and go somewhere, go a different way. Try a different route. 
If you brush your teeth with your right hand, use your left hand. Your dentist will tell you that's a great idea because now, because you're using a weaker hand, you won't be brushing as hard and removing more enamel than you have been doing for the last 40, 50, 60 years, right? But dress differently. If you put on your pants first in the morning, put on your shirt. Do things differently. Be open to the possibilities. What happens then is your mind and your body starts paying attention because all of a sudden, now you've got to think about what you're doing and where you're going as opposed to being a robot and just doing everything rote, okay? so. Positive, be open. If you want to be open, if I if I may be so bold, one of the things I think most experienced rich people forget, unfortunately, and through no fault of their own, is their network. You have available to you a slew of people, a slew who've known you for 10, 15, 30 years, who maybe you've lost touch with. Now be a great time to rekindle those relationships. And here's why. And anybody who's been looking for work unsuccessfully, who's been submitting their resumes into the black hole, into all these job boards, can attest to this. You, you submit online to your resume to some ungodly job board or even a company website. They don't know you from Adam. Your resume is one of a gazillion, a gazillion, right? No one's going to notice it, right? But if you know somebody who works at a company where you want to work and he or she can literally walk your resume into a hiring manager, don't you think you've now raised your capital and your appearance and your visibility compared to the other gazillion people that have submitted their resumes into this black hole? No, no one is ever going to see, let alone read, other than the ATS, the automated uh, tracking system. So use your network, right? But to Ken's point, don't grovel. You can tell them you're looking for work, but you want to rekindle those relationships from people from long ago. But the ones that are, are closer to you, right, tell them what you're trying to accomplish. Maybe they can help you. Ask them for some advice, right? Pay attention to the people that you know, because here's the thing. Everybody you know knows 250 people that you don't know. Think about that. Everybody you know knows 250 people you don't know. And those 250 people know another 250 people that you don't know. And the fact of the matter is, I bet you if you go back and you look at your resume and you think about the jobs you've had, I know I did it with my, with me, almost every job I've had in my career and every hiring manager I've had is someone I did not know because I didn't know them. However, I was introduced to them because of somebody I knew. So at your fingertips, believe it or not, is a wealth of knowledge and a wealth of information. Pay attention to the people in your network who work with a lot of people, people that service a lot of people, your auto mechanic, your hairstylist, your dentist, your dentist, your doctors, you know, your lawyer, your accountant, people that talk to people are be, your, your network becomes your sales force, if you will. Right. So get them to start touting who you are, or just pay attention to conversations that they're having on, on the, on the, line at the shop, at the supermarket, at the soccer field, or wherever they are listening in for maybe somebody who could provide a lead for you. Again, that network that is available to you, it's out there. You just have either forgotten about it because you're stuck in the weeds, you're sitting in the forest, you can't see the trees, between your LinkedIn profile, between your alumni from college or even high school. I mean, there alone is a gazillion people that you got to know, I believe. So homework assignment. Go back into LinkedIn or go back into your contacts and start making phone calls, right? If you're experienced rich, you know how a phone works, right? And go out and start making phone calls and start reconnecting with people. You'd be surprised. You would be surprised how many people will help you, but they didn't know you need help. But you got to reach out, okay? Uh, all of this leads to, I think, I hope you hear, a positive mindset, right? And Carol Dweck is a, a psychologist. I think she was from Stanford. She wrote this book called Mindset. And she talks about fixed versus growth mindset. And it really is how you perceive yourself in the world, whether you can learn something or not. And it's a challenge. And I've alluded to this before. It's a challenge if you walk around thinking the world stinks. I'm not going to get any better than what I am right now. This is what I am. This is what I know. I can't do anything else. I, if that's your attitude, that's a challenge. I'm not saying you can't find work, but it's going to be a challenge as opposed to 
being the person who was like, man, this is like, I, I can do this. This is fun. This is exciting. I, I may not know it, but I know where to get the information. I know who might be able to have an answer to it. Here's the thing, right? I've learned over the years, every time I learn something new, I realize how much I don't know. And as far as I'm concerned, that's all I need to know. And I don't spend time watching the news. If you do, God bless you. I don't. My friends say, Joey, why don't you watch the news? Because you know what? How will you know if something bad happened? <laughs> That's all they want to tell me. What or the bad stuff, right? How will I know something? Bad? You'll let me know. You'll send me a text. You'll call me. You'll send me an email. I'll, I'll hear about it, I'm sure, right? I don't have the time, let alone want to spend the effort watching and listening to all that beating up, right? And I'm, I'm not clairvoyant, but tonight at 11 o'clock, or even at 6 o'clock, First four stories on the news. Death, despair, destruction, desolation. Commercial break. Oh, my God. I can't believe what's going on. <laughs> now, this one's doing that. This is happening here. It's like, I don't need to hear this, right? I don't need to hear this. I need to be positive and upbeat. If you're a job seeker and you're watching the news and you're letting that stuff soak you in, soak into you, it's coming out of you. Somehow, some way. I don't want to do that. I'm telling you, between Google and YouTube, there is enough positive uplifting, inspirational, motivational stuff, for lack of a better word, and people that can get, help you get out of whatever doldrums you may be in and pump you up. I did it before this before this call. I listened to some to some podcasts that I'm I'm very I'm happy with. I watched some videos that I've saved over the years. I, I just I've pumped myself up and I listen to this stuff and I film it because how simple would it be for me to say, woe is me, the world stinks. The economy blows. I'm not making money, right? I, I could do that all day long. I don't want to do that. I don't want. I don't want to do that. I want to be positive and upbeat. Positive beats negative every day. And so here's my final two seconds, if I may. I see how much time I have. Okay, I got like a couple minutes. Please, <laughs> please live your life, right? Live, love, and laugh, and above all, lighten up. Stop taking, take the pressure off of you. It's hard enough as it is. There are four generations of people working today in today's job market. It's, a, it's stressful, right? You can't come in fighting that. Accept it and work with it and, and be one of the people who can, quote unquote, be a mentor. Have you thought about that? You can certainly teach the younger folks. And guess what? They can teach you if you're open and you have a positive mindset. How are we doing, Brenda? You're doing awesome. I, 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 I'm always, I'm in the background the whole time listening in and I kind of listen for the cues as, as the presenter starts to kind of say and getting towards the end. And when you say, I'm looking at my time, I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll pop myself in here, but no, this is great. I feel like Joey, you're, you, you make me smile and you make me laugh and you're such an inspiration. And then you turn the dial a little bit and you're like, you slap me over the face. You know, you're like, stop doing that. Stop acting so nice. And we need that. When we are in career transition, I always talk about this on our Friday calls. It's a roller coaster of emotions, mm -hmm. and it's really easy when you're on that downturn to get stuck at the bottom. Yep. And it's 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 really easy to just sit there and wallow in your own you know self pity. But you got to pull yourself back up. You got to let the roller coaster of emotions pull you back up. Um, on that note, we've got a co couple comments and questions that are coming in. And by the way, I'll invite our audience. If you do have any questions for Joey or any thoughts on the conversation, feel free to drop them in chat right now. We'll have a few minutes to do this. Um, and first one was I wanted to pull up is from Harvey. Sounds a lot like the law of attraction. Do you mention the idea of assuming your interview is going to choose you or something similar? What are your thoughts on that? Joey? Absolutely. I think Harvey's a very good friend of mine. Thank you. Thanks for joining Harvey. So I, I teach my job seekers, my clients. Mm -hmm. I'm a big, I'm a big, I'm a big proponent of visualization. I want you to visualize when you're in your interview. That's halfway through the interview, the, the hiring manager is actually going to stop you in your tracks, pick up their phone, call up their admin and say, all those people that are scheduled to come in for, uh, for additional interviews, just call them because our nine inch shining armor is sitting right here. I teach, I teach job seekers. You need to think that. Why would you not think? Why would you think that you're just going there for an interview when it really is a conversation and you're you selling yourself and getting them to realize, where have you been, Joey? Under what rock have you been hiding? And why is it taking so long for you to get here? Where were you yesterday and the day before? Well, I can't change the past. Here I am today. 
when can I start? Tomorrow? Great. I'll be here bright and, bright and early, right? So, yeah, visualizing that you are their knight in shining armor. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be, a, it's not a guarantee that it will happen. But you know what? What have you got to lose? Right? So, yeah. So, definitely. What, one of these days, you're going to be right. You know, you're going to get the yeah. job. Right. So why not, why not assume every one of those? It's almost like, you know, that power pose. I can't think of the author. Is it Amy Cuddy or somebody who does it? But she does the power pose before she does a presentation because it gives you confidence. Yeah. And then you go into the presentation with more confidence. It's the same thing. Assume they're going to interview you. They're going to hire you because one of these days you're going to be right. And I think it does give you that, that positive uh, orientation. It, it, yeah. It, and again, it's not rocket science. It, again, it's. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's simple, but yeah. maybe it is. I, I, I don't know. It just, again, I'm not, a, we're not children, right? We are, we have, we're adults. We have mm -hmm. to take responsibility for our thoughts and our actions. We yeah. can't blame our parents, the politicians, the traffic. I mean, it, we got to take responsibility. <laughs> Joey, I see so many people are like lighting up with your <laughs> inspiration. And here's just one. And this one, it says LinkedIn user, by the way, it says that because either you're, you're, profile's a little bit locked down or you haven't enabled your third party. I'll put a link in comments so we can see who that person is if you choose to do so. But this person says what a lot of people are saying. Um, they're, the challenge is staying positive. And, and this person says, I try to look at the small successes. Um, Joey, I heard of an app a while back. I think it's called Happier, H-A-P-P-I-E-R, where you can go in and you can like log three things that made you happy today, three things that make yeah. you smile. Mm -hmm. I mean, is, is, is it kind of like if you want to be more positive, you got to you, I don't want to say you have to force yourself, but you have to put the effort. Like, I don't imagine you wake up smiling in roses every day. I mean, I could be wrong. I do. Actually, I do. <laughs> and here's, here's why, Brenda. Here's why, okay? Because when I wake up in the morning, I think to myself, and I, this is going to be morbid, and I apologize. I, no <laughs> right? I apologize. This is not mine. I learned this either from Joan Rivers or I don't remember who, but a comedian said, when I wake up in the morning and I read the obituaries and I'm not in them, it's going to be a good day, right? <laughs> So, so when I wake up in the morning, Brenda, I literally say thank you. I literally, yeah. I don't know, I say it out into the world, right? Because you know what? I get to live another day and make an impression and make a positive influence. Is it going to happen? I don't know. But to your point, <laughs> why wouldn't I think that, right? One day I'm going to be right. One day I'm going to be a positive influence to somebody. One day I'm going to make a difference to somebody. And yeah. okay, I'm just going to go down. So yeah, so yeah, sorry. I do wake up with a smile. <laughs> I'm like, you probably have roses at your nightstand. That's why you're thinking <laughs> smiling roses every morning. Or maybe you've got your book. And by the way, um, shout out again to Joey's book. I did put the link in comments and I have it like up behind my shoulder. Don't paint your kitchen. You can look at that at Amazon. Um, little plug for you. But yeah, I think it's it's part of this is like surround yourself with positive people. Be positive. Put affirmations around you. Read positive books. And um, I think positive energy creates more positive energy. And I love the things that you talk about. And Amy was talking about it, like change your brain, create new, like brush your teeth with a different side. Cause it, it forces your brain to change gears and, yeah. and to engage in different ways. And I Absolutely. think that's so important. Yeah. So I, go, ahead. go ahead. Anyway, it's just, you know, it's, you gotta, now that we're experienced rich. Okay. It's not 1950. It's a different yeah. world, right? They're not calling you, right? Nobody's calling you. You got to, you got to take the bull by the horns and shake stuff up. I'm not mm -hmm. saying be mean and belligerent. I'm just saying do things differently. Stand out, right? Be the person that, be the person who gets sponsored by a friend who brings your resume into a hiring manager. Yeah. That doesn't happen a lot, right? Because mm -hmm. people are bombarding the, <laughs> these black holes with their resumes. Hiring managers are busy. They're swamped. They don't have the time. But if their colleague walks in with a piece of paper that says, hey, you should check out Brenda here. She may she may be the right fit for this company. OK, I'm going to give Brenda a call. There you yeah. go. You've, you've, you've changed all of your visibility. That doesn't happen Brenda, if you're sitting at home, assuming the fetal position and sucking your thumb. It doesn't work. <laughs> you can't. You've got. Right, yeah. that's the thing. You can't think about this stuff. you got to do something. you got to yeah. take the action. Right. They're not coming to you. you got to go to them. Just yeah. be polite, be persistent, and above all, please be positive. I feel like you've got so many 
inspirational books coming out of you oh. all the time. I mean, I know you talk about me and like my little one liners and my stories, mm -hmm. and I'm going to use one right now when we talk about experienced rich job seekers. Before I do that, though, let me just say hi to Sue real quick because she's, she's, she's in the green room. Make sure she can see and hear us. Hey, Sue, how you doing? Sue's our I'm next speaker. I'm doing really well. I'm excited, Joey. It's all about them. You helped my <laughs> presentation. <laughs> Awesome. Sue, I'm going to put you back in the green room. We'll bring you back in just a few minutes here. I always like to do the little audio check, making sure our next person in the wings is ready to go. So Joey, I always use, I, I'm going to use one of my analogies. One of my stories is when I talk about experienced rich job seekers, and it's sometimes it's like reframing the way that you say things. So I could be holding out something to you like a bowl and I could say, Joey, does this milk smell sour to you? Right. And you're even before I reach it in front of you, you're like crinkling your nose and you're like, well, I don't want to smell the sour milk. I know what that smells. It's like that pungent burns. Your you're like crinkling up your nose as opposed to same bowl. If I hold it up to you and I say, Joey, smell this Greek yogurt. Doesn't it smell amazing? Right. They are both sour milk. Yogurt is sour. It's fermented milk, right? They're both right. the same thing, but it's the way that you frame things up, I think sometimes helps to adjust our mindset a little bit. Yeah. Did you want to add anything to that? Absolutely. Again, it's the way you look at it. If you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change, right? And yeah. it's, again, we're not, I don't, I don't mean to be a preacher and I apologize for sounding like one, but we're not three-year-olds anymore, right? We don't, we can't have tantrums and assume that someone is going to take care of us. Yeah. We've got to do it ourselves. We've got to pick ourselves up and make things happen. And we're not going to make things happen if all we're doing is wallowing in self-pity, the world stinks, all these things that I can't control are holding me back. Really? It, and as I can't say before, don't look at the numbers. Like I say to people, so what What? What are the, who cares what the numbers are, right? Your, your job is waiting for you, but it's not coming to you. It's not 1950. You got to yeah. go get it. You got to go find it. And you got yeah. this network, like I said, of people around you. Who can help you to reduce that time to get there? Make use of them as experienced, rich individuals on this call. Mm -hmm. They're out there. Those people are out. I don't know who they are. You do, right? Take the time if you have to get a pencil and paper and start making a list of all the people you know. You'd be surprised. I'm telling you, you'd be surprised who can help you, but they don't mm -hmm. know you need help because they don't know. They yeah, you got to let them know. Yeah. Hey, no, right. But you got to be positive. I just have I mentioned that enough. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like we're going to get a bumper sticker or a coffee mug that says be positive, Joey Himmelfarb. Okay. <laughs> Joey, <laughs> if there are folks that are interested in connecting with you on LinkedIn, I've just pulled your profile up on yeah. screen so they can see you. Um, are you open to connecting with people? Would of that be course. Okay? Of okay. course. Please reach right. out to me. Let me know that you that you saw this, that you were here on this live -a uh, mm -hmm. So I know who you are, point of reference, as Cam was mentioning. Be happy to work with you. I'm offering I'm offering anybody who's interested a one-hour session where we'll have a conversation. And if you want to go further, you know, we can talk about that. But I am I just, like Ken, I want to pay it forward. I've been unemployed many times. It stinks. I know. Mm -hmm. I can relate. It's not It's not fun. It's not, it's not a happy place. But you know what? Tomorrow is another day. And he was right. The sun will come out tomorrow. It always <laughs> does, right? I love it. And Joey, if someone is interested in working with you, do you work with people one on one or, or tell us a little bit about that? Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, but it's always never before I had this conversation because yeah. you may not be ready. We not be we may not be the right fit, right? We sell every day in that conversation. I'm selling myself to you. You're selling mm -hmm. yourself to me. If it works, okay. that's great. We can move forward. If it doesn't, that's okay. That's yeah, fine. no harm, no foul. No, and exactly. uh, I want to put the link up on screen again and just remind everyone, if you want to get the access to the playback, I'm going to clip out all the speaker presentations. If you want a, another slice of Joey, so to speak, you want to hear his talk again, uh, or if you'd like to learn more about that one hour session that he mentioned, uh, the one hour call, call to mention, or um, access to any of the other presenter resources, go to mellermarketing.com slash Lil Rich, L-I-L stands for LinkedIn Live. Rich is the experience rich. So just go to mellermarketing.com slash little rich, little rich rather, I should say. Somebody typed in L-I rich and they said they got a 404 and somebody else corrected them. So I just <laughs> want to make sure that they, they pointed that out. Joey, thank you so much. You've been a delight. You made me laugh. You made me smile. I know others feel the same way and you're just such a delight. Thank you so much for your time here today.
Thank you, Brenda. Good luck the rest of the session. Thanks so much. All right. Appreciate it. All right. We're going to move us along here. Are you guys enjoying this? I am loving the speakers and um, I'm self-employed. I'm enthusiastically self-employed. I think it even says it below here, but I, I try to surround myself with amazing people all the time. And I'm so delighted to bring all of them to you here today to help those of you who are in a job search mode in the career evolution journey, so to speak. And maybe you are experienced rich, you're age 40 plus, 50 plus, 60 plus. Uh, I specifically asked individuals and our next speaker, Sue is another one of these individuals, like people who work with the job seeker community, who work with people who are experience rich to, to share advice with us. And Sue, you and I, I feel like we've known each other forever. I don't even remember where we met originally. I know it was on LinkedIn, but do you, do you recall how we first started interacting? Well, I got connected to you early, early in COVID because of Ken Lang, who I met through absolutely Abby before COVID. It's amazing, Brenda, the minute that I connected with you, I found someone who also gives the how to what other tell you to do. And I thought, oh, this is this is a person I need to follow. Um, yeah. So like now we're going on a three year anniversary soon. I'm excited. That's awesome. Well, I'm delighted to have you. So, Sue, for those people who don't know what you do, tell us a little bit about your business. Who do you help and what do you do? I have a global mentoring practice. It means I work all over the world with people who are in transition at various levels, professional, senior to junior. So I'm experience rich like you. I've decided now I'm 50 with seven decades of wisdom. That's the best <laughs> I love way it. To talk about it. <laughs> but I also help people um, because of my background in public health program evaluation. I really focus on show me the evidence. How do you get evidence? And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm so excited. It's one of my most favorite topics. The most important thing, I'm the mentor with Pom Poms. Next to you, I'm most invested in your success. That's awesome. And are you doing a slide share today? Am I remembering correctly? I or? am, okay. yes. Let's I go ahead and get, get you started yeah. with that in the background. And I'll just remind everyone as you're watching here today, if you're just starting to watch, we're going all day. We're going, well, four hours, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. today. And if you joined a little late and you want to get access to the playbacks and resources, just check out mellermarketing.com slash lilrich, and then you can get access to them. All right. I'm going to add this to the stream here, Sue. Good. And thank you right. so much for, I love the branding color. You got my pink brand color in your, your deck. I'm like, yay, there's pink everywhere. <laughs> You'll see a lot more of it. Thank you. All right. Thanks, With that Brenda. said, I'm going to pull myself off screen, Sue, and I'll see you in about 20 minutes and go ahead and take the show from here. Perfect. Thanks very much. Before we get started, tell me how you are about describing your results. I'm going to try to flip over to the LinkedIn chat. Actually, I'm going to do what Brenda taught me. I learned so much about doing um, on-the-fly performances from Brenda. What I want you to do is tell me, yeah, give yourself a three if you want to share your rating. No problem. I can describe my results. Two is where a lot of us fall. I can do it, but I don't feel I'm good at, you, at it. And there are people who are like, nope, I can never do it, don't want to do it, can't do it, in whatever way makes sense for you. So I'm checking out the chat. If you go ahead and type them in, I'd love to know what you all are thinking about today. Do I have a lot of threes or do I have a lot of ones? Where are you on that? Oh, the chat is lively. I haven't even gotten to the bottom of it yet. All right, great. Looks like we have a few twos, a few threes. Thank you, Brenda, for your help on that. Terrific. As I said earlier, I'm here to help you with the how to what a lot of times others tell you what to do. A couple of weeks ago, I went into a dresser drawer where I keep important papers because I don't have a file cabinet anymore. And I found a photo on, stuck on the side. It's an important photo for me, especially because I don't keep a lot of printed photos anymore. I didn't realize it wasn't with my other photos. I didn't know it was a treasured photo until I opened it and found it. I'm sure this has happened to you. Have you opened up a briefcase or a purse you might not have used for the past three years? Maybe you put something away in a not usual place and then suddenly you found it again. That's what today I'm going to talk to you about, uncovering your evidence and then using it. Just like Joey, I'm giving you the one takeaway. 
It's not about the activity. It's about the achievement. That might be your result, your accomplishment, or if you want my real quick phrase, it's not the doing, it's the done. So let me remind you of where we're going. First, we're gonna start with a talk about what the career path has looked like for you who, you, me too, who are experience rich. Then we're gonna excavate your evidence. We're gonna talk about quantifying it because that's where the big challenges come in and you're gonna have a solution. And by the time we get here, you're gonna already be saying, but Sue, you promised in your title a formula. Yes, a title and a worksheet. So let's start with the career path. We know that we've come from a variety of different ways to where we are today. What's hard though, is that people feel that I work with tell me, Sue, I'm a generalist. I've had so many different paths, parts in my career, 20 years and there's no common thread. Other people tell me, Sue, I'm, suddenly I'm too well done. I'm not valued, I'm being sidelined. Even though clients are happy with what I produce, I'm still producing my results. I'm a knowledge worker. I don't have sales, I don't have numbers, I don't have percents of targets that I reach. What mistake that many of us make is we're not describing our results effectively. Joey already told you this, and I'm here to tell you this too. When you talk, you have to, or write, you have to talk to the other side of the conversation, the hiring manager, the boss that you want to get a promotion from. But you feel that it's difficult because you're weaving together your story over time with lots of different twists and turns in it. Today, we're gonna to talk about excavating your evidence and going up to the top of this mountain, maybe. Usually when I talk, I talk about the whole mountain. That's your professional presence. That's what we first see about you on LinkedIn, what we see in person, um, even in the comments, we get a sense of you. But we're going deep right to the evidence, where it is, pulling it out, and then importantly, helping you process it in a way that you can use those results to show what you accomplish in a way the other person on the other side of the conversation can understand it. I know what this word means and I use it a lot and it still makes me feel a little angst when I see it written like this, big letters all close together, quantify, I don't, I, Sue, never had sales targets in my, um, my career. But what about if I propose an expanded way of thinking about it? Give you some breathing space in here. I'm gonna show you how to do this. And it's two components. It's actually <clears throat> not numbers that you quantify, but you quantify what you did and what you produced. That makes you jump off the page. I'd love to jump out of the screen, but maybe jump up on the screen and make people's ears perk up when they hear you talking because it gives dimensionality to you as a professional. Here's the framework I wanna show you, I want to show you before we get into the formula. There's two aspects to quantifying. One is what I call your intellectual property, your work products, and I'll talk about intellectual property in a minute. This, and that's what you produced of the two things I mentioned earlier. And the context is what you did. So when we go on to work products, intellectual property, the way I define it is, that is your expertise that you bring into your work. Things that you create, things that you add to that all become work products. It may belong to a company, but it has your stamp in it, it has your expertise in it, and it is something that you own. And work products are usually done in two ways. You've either, you either write something or you say something. I know I'm making it basic, but it's writing and speaking. Writing myriad documents. Here's just a few of the kinds of documents that I know all of you that I've worked with produce in some fashion. And there's a lot more. If you think of something important, send me a DM on LinkedIn or message me and let me know. I love to make this GIF longer. 
when it comes to speaking, we don't always realize how much our expertise of our work is being transmitted. Briefings, maybe you're doing training or mentoring. You might be giving comments to the press. Some of you have client meetings, community engagement meetings, even the chat box real estate is a form of speaking your expertise. The second part of our framework is context. And I call this the use your schooling, really, because think about why we need to provide context and how. I'm taking you to elementary school and reminding you there's adjectives and adverbs that you need to go back to using. Why? These are the kinds of sentences I see on people's resumes or they tell me when I first meet with them or I see on LinkedIn. I managed contracts. A lot of times people are writing the doing, not the achievement. Remember, it's not the activity, it's the achievement. I don't know whether we forget to include our adjectives and adverbs or whether we're taking a shortcut for what we learned in school. But look at the way adjectives and adverbs can add color and not just the red color I made here. Here's a phrase that I put in, has no numbers in it, but when I added a portfolio of, you suddenly see complexity to the contract, contract management that this person did. The second part of using your schooling, now I'm taking you to post-secondary school. I call these measures, measures of action beyond the who, what, when, where, why, and sometimes how that we are supposed to answer when we give responses or uh, do our writing. <clears throat> and these measures are volume, frequency, duration, continuity, and periodicity. So by now, I hope you're saying to yourself, okay, Sue, I'm ready to go. How can I demonstrate my value? Because now we're going to do it. I'm giving you both a formula and a worksheet. And I'm going to go through the formula line by line and then show you how it breaks out using the worksheet so that you understand you've got the how right in front of you. First, you're going to choose an action verb that leads to the outcome. Everybody knows about action verbs. There's lists of 80 action verbs, 66 action verbs, but not every action verb is equal. You want to choose an action verb that leads to your outcome. I already hear you saying, but Sue, I don't have an outcome. Your outcome is what do you contribute to in your organization, to the work that your group is doing. As a solopreneur, you may be contributing work to a body of expertise. And that outcome then defines how and in what way your action verb works. The how usually comes the next, and the how encompasses your role, writing, analyzing, speaking, writing. And the for whom is who you're doing it for. And it's important to specify because it's different if you're writing for your boss than for a client, than for a community or organization. And sometimes people will put in a with what tools, especially if there are certain uh, skills or certifications that an employer, potential employer may be looking for. So let's apply this formula. This is a before um, that I call collaborative events facilitation was this person's um, result. Assisted in the co-design of cultural events with teachers and the recreation center. Here's how I rewrote it. Now, I didn't have any content from this person, but I added it in to show you and we'll break it down in the formula. Yes, is it two more lines? Yes, but just think that could be the lines, the extra lines that will get you the job. So the action verb is delivered. Remember what he said? He said, Edward said, assisted. The outcome is what Sue made up but I know that they produce more than one event, five cultural events over a school year. The how is more of his role, co-designing and producing, in this case, I said by a team of nine. It's implied there was no for whom there. It's implied that it was being done for the school, the students, the parents, that would be expected. 
And the how, even though there wasn't a tool, there was a process described of how they use uh, inputs on a month in their monthly meetings when they're planning and evaluating for the next event. So that's how it looks in the worksheet. And just to remind you, this is what I went from before and after. I know that was really quick. I understand that, but I wanted to give you an introduction to understand why this is so important. Sue will never open a dresser drawer and find a photo again, I hope. And you will never leave your treasures behind. This is your evidence. I hope that you're already thinking of one that you want to work on, but you'll be aware of how to demonstrate what you're doing. I know you're already reflecting on, oh, intellectual property. I write things. I speak things. I have those things. I didn't even know I did. And the context, what adjectives and adverbs can you add? What I'd like you to do in the next 24 hours is take one of your results, make the transformation. You'll be getting these resources. And I'm going to show you in a minute how to access them, and I'll put links in the chat when I'm done here. If you give me your before and after, you'll definitely get feedback from me. But if you do it in the next 24 hours, it will reinforce your learning because I also learned this from Brenda. I learned so much from Brenda. Post in LinkedIn, a short post. Remember, Ken told you you have a lot to post about? Post about today's session with me. Just one key takeaway. And hint, hint, I already gave you the key takeaway. It's not about the activity. It's about the achieve. It's the achievement. And don't forget that LinkedIn loves visuals. So you could show your before and after if you're brave, and that's fine if you don't want to. But I'm also going to give you a link to a slot, the image of the first slide that I had, the title slide, that you can put with your post. But make sure to tag me in it so I can amplify it for you. So here's the resources. I'm, you're going to have a package that has all these links in it. I'm giving you a complete slide doc of what I just presented that has seven before and after examples across different kinds of categories of workers. You'll get a link to the Google Sheets document that has the formula, the worksheet, and the example we just went over. So you won't have to think, now, what did Sue put in there? And you'll get the link to the title slide that you can use if you want. I put a QR code that has all of these links and then the next one I'm going to show you. And I'll put the link for all the resources packaged into one, one quick link for you to get any of the documents that you want. Here's my offer to you. If you can submit a before after result, through this Google form, you can see the whole form is here. You only have to fill in your name, your email, and your before and after. You By Monday evening, you'll get feedback from me and a one-to-one -one meeting of 30 minutes, any way that I can help you move forward. I always like to give image credits, even though a lot of the places provide us free images, because they, these images these photographers have given me access to have made this presentation come alive. I love to connect on LinkedIn if we're not already connected. I'm in a variety of places. I still have Clubhouse there, but don't get on as much. But thanks, Ken, for bringing it up. I want to point out that I have two short courses. They're free, 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 free. The first one will take you uh, into completely into what we started today with providing and using and developing your evidence and using it. And it takes you from starting on how to tell your story in a way that conversation can be understood on the other side, all the way to how you put it up on your LinkedIn profile. That can be done. It's four workbook lessons. It's self-paced um, until I open the cohort in September. And then we have a second course that I do with Ron Anderson, where we curated resources on using your professional presence. And that's for cover letters, interviewing, assessment tests, uh, branding, and networking. So any of these are free. You can get on Teachable. You'll have these links to join. I would welcome being able to do this with you. And Brenda, I ended up uh, finishing just about at my hopefully expected time. So I'm back.
you are perfect and there's so so much great information in here and as you were i was like trying to write down notes and grab screen captures and then you said oh i'm going to share your slide deck i'm like okay good because i write fast and i can get a lot of information and kind of die but i'm like i know i'm not um and, and everybody's the same not everybody's the same way with processing that information so i'm so glad that you're making your slide deck and your resources available to to all of us so i want to pull myself back on screen but i also in radio terms, it used to be called uh, hitting the post when the DJ would talk until the, the singer started playing and then they would stop talking. And I was telling all of my presenters, including Sue, I said, you know, plan on about 20 minutes and then I'll come back in and we'll facilitate a Q&A. And it was like just as we were rounding the corner into 1219, it was just starting. So she, you timed thing, everything perfectly. I just want to commend you on that, Sue. So great job. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move into some Q&A for, for Sue. So if you do have any questions for Sue about any of the resources or information that she shared up on screen, don't be shy. Go ahead and drop your comments below. And you can you can use the I'm asking for a friend. You can say, um, my friend was wondering about how to list something on their resume or use your technique to incorporate. You can use that approach if you feel a little nervous about asking questions, but don't be shy. And I also want to remind everyone to please feel free to introduce themselves in, in the chat if you have not already done so, because there might be hiring managers and recruiters watching. Like what I did for the leading up to the event, Sue, I went through my network and I invited everyone that was like a recruiter or had recruiting someplace. I'm like, I'm inviting them in. So there may be people that are watching, the readers, if you will, not the lurkers, but there may be people that are watching in here as well. So I, I did see somebody about the QR code and I, I admit, Susan, I did the same thing as you. Sue, when you had the QR code on screen, I was pulling it on and I think it was like too, it was too small, but it was, I think it was probably because you were sharing a slide deck on oh, screen. Okay. We couldn't see it. Um, so yes, Sue will be making those resources available. I believe that slide deck is a part of what you're making available. Right. right? I'm going to put the, there'll be one link that will take you to all those other uh, all the resources. I'll put it in the chat as soon as we're done. I'm going to need about five monitors now to keep, I don't know how you I know, do it. right? <laughs> do you have like of, two or how many do you have right now? I have two huge ones and I'm already contemplating a third and I'm, I don't do any <laughs> gaming. This is just about presenting, but yeah, made me <laughs> Whenever I see those people with the, the multi-monitor, I'm always like impressed. Hey, I'm, I'm going to ask our audience, anyone is watching, do you have more than two screens? If so, go into chat and tell us how many screens that you work off of. It's probably like the people that are in like programming or technology or gaming or things. But yeah. I like one of my nephews has, he's got like the Uber large screen. It's, it's almost uh, like the size of three screens, but it's like one large screen. And I've even got like a TV mounted on the wall. And I have the thing now that you can like um, pull up your, you know, you can do the screen share from your phone onto the, so technically I guess I have three, but one is really not as usable as that. But yes, we will make sure to get everyone the resources. And yeah, by the way, will come and thank you, Susan Davis. She's a big supporter. And um, yeah, she's and, awesome. Yeah, she's on our she's Friday great. calls. And um, I also want to give a shout out, Brenda. I did send this out to my global network and I know at least three of them are here, maybe oh, more. I'm thrilled to see them joining because the global world, Brenda knows this. That's why I asked her if I could join her VIP job seekers group originally to figure out what my global network is seeing and where we're seeing more uh, common areas coming. So I'm happy to see them on here as well. That's awesome. I'm, I'm going through chat to see who was the name. Did you say Maggie Moore? For what? Oh, I thought you said a specific name. I thought you, you oh, mentioned Oh, Susan it. Davis. Just uh, Susan. Oh, Susan Davis. Okay. Uh, and thought... the person who asked about links, yes, I'll I'll put it in as soon as, soon as I'm off stage. I'm not trying to rush off, but I no, not at all. Sure you have it. Great. Yeah, and and by the way, I did put the link back up on screen here again, and I'll drop it in the chat again if you want to register. And what I'm doing is I've asked all of the presenters, I have like a Google Doc with like the run of show, and I had them put their bio, their links, their resources, all the freebies they talked about, a list of their services if you're interested in learning more about them. And then I'm also going to um, chunk out all of the videos because right now it's going to be from 11 to 3. That's like four hours long. Nobody's going to sit through a four hour, but maybe you want to watch Sue's playback specifically. So I'm going to chunk everything out into 30 minute segments. And that way you can watch Sue's video as you're watching the playback and looking through her resources. But you do need to register. Where's the link over there? Mellermarketing.com slash Lil Rich. 
little rich, if you will. Sounds like a cartoon so character. Little yeah, rich. He's a little rich guy, or maybe she's a little rich girl. I don't know. But LIL stands for LinkedIn Live, and the rich comes from my phrase, experience rich. So that's where that acronym is coming from. Um, we're going to take a couple questions before we do. So I see Renee is in our green room, if you will. I'm going to pull Renee up on screen real quick just to say, hey, Renee, can you hear me okay? Yes, I'm hearing you. Wonderful. I'm going to put you back inside the green room for now. We'll bring you back in just a few minutes if that's okay. All right. Perfect. So you see how I'm doing this like behind the scenes and it's behind the scenes. And sometimes I pull the stage curtain away and I show you guys like what I'm doing. So you can see how the magic all this I've learned all the so much from your behind the scenes. That's <laughs> been great. Oh, I'm so glad to hear. So, all right, let's see if any questions or comments are starting to come in. We were talking about screens and uh, so many people are commenting, um, no, and and I see one from David. I use one screen and a 15 inch laptop. Barbara has four. Barbara, congratulations. Yay. You're like an idol. <laughs> yeah, I saw some, two people seem to have four. So um, yeah, I'm not competing with you. If I get three that, I don't know where I'm going to put them all. <laughs> And I think a lot of us are, are similar to Melissa, you know, experience rich. I'm on the one screen. I just got on the one, not just got on, but you know what I mean? Like, it's like enough. I don't, I don't need more than two screens that are on here. Um, David, I don't know. I feel like I could use four screens. I Sue, I think you could probably make use of them too, right? <laughs> uh um, thank you. And, and I see so many people watching. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Toastmasters right now, because when somebody says, hey, you've got a great speaking voice. I didn't just become a good speaker. I've always been an introvert, a heart like like Kenneth was talking about earlier. And if you want to get better at skills, sometimes you have to apply to training and programs. And Toastmasters is one of the organizations that is really great for building up public speaking skills. So I, I got to give a shout out to them for the compliment on that. I do appreciate it. And I see a comment coming from uh, Martina. Tina, thank you oh, so much for watching. You, thank you, Sue, for sharing very actionable steps with us today. We appreciate you watching, Tina. Um, yes, I see Melissa saying, Lil Rich is my DJ name. Remember those things, Sue? It'd be like, what's your downtown Abbey name? And it was like the street you lived on added the word ton on it and, yeah. and different iterations, things like that. Well, Brenda, um, you're a lot younger than me. There's a comic book we grew up with called uh, Little Richie or Little Rich. And his family was very wealthy and Archie wasn't. So I oh, don't yeah, that's what I thought of when I saw Little Rich. Wasn't Richie Rich? Is that Richie the same Rich? Name? That's what okay, it was. Now that you say that, I'm like that kind of rings a bell. Like yeah. where am I? Well, Lil Rich that brought from? it right back to me. So you've got you've definitely you, um, Melissa's right. You should keep that name. You, you know, you got to like uh, trademark it or at least L use Lil a hashtag Rich. for I, it. I, honestly, I just wanted an acronym that what I didn't want to type in MellorMarketing.com Experience Rich LinkedIn Live with Like I didn't want to do that to anyone. Like that's crazy. And I didn't want to just do L I L because if I do other LinkedIn lives in the series, you know, I if you start typing it in, you'd go to the wrong page. So I figured Lil Rich would kind of be nice, and it, it's focusing on the rich element of things. And if we're job seekers, we're trying to get back to work to get some money in our pockets, so to speak. And we're playing up on the experience rich as well. So a lot of things that are kind of coming together on that. And I see Bev had asked, can you put the link in chat? Just did it, Bev. Thank you for asking because I'm sure somebody else was like, I can't find it either. So that is now inside of chat. Hey, look at this, uh, Sue. Meryl oh, says yes, thank you, Meryl. <laughs> We're getting a little uh, run up on our history on here as well. Yeah. All right. I don't see any additional comments or questions coming. I see a lot of conversation about the screens and stuff like that coming in. But um, as we start to wind down your part of the portion of the conversation, Sue, can you remind if there's folks that are interested in working with you, do you work with people one on one? And if so, could you tell us a little bit about your services? I do. Uh, I work less and less with people one on one unless they've come through the course, um, especially mm -hmm. for job seekers. I made the course free of charge so that everybody has access to it. The minute you start in my course and submit an assignment, you get live review meetings with me. And if you finish um, three or four steps, you'll get an individual meeting with me. And I also, for those people who've been through the course, um, have monthly office hours. So there's a lot of ways to work with me once you come with some of the um, background done already. Wonderful. And I just pulled your LinkedIn up on screen Thanks. over here for those that are watching on the live video right now. LinkedIn.com slash in slash Sue Griffey. 
And are you open to connecting with people? I love connections. Please connect. If you do it in the next couple hours, I'm going to know it's the live I won't even ask you to write a message. Just mm -hmm. connect. And I'd be happy to chat with you online uh, on LinkedIn about how to get you started on the course. I do have a course page and I have a company page. So if you go to my Sue Mentors company page, you can find information there as well. But it it's all in the link. And once you get into the slide deck, the last page is all my resources and the ways to uh, reach me. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Sue. It's been such you're a welcome. delight and love. You're like the, the palms. I love when you bring the palms with you wherever you go. You bring the um, the support and you bring this positive note to you. So thank you so much for sharing. And I know you'll be including your resources in the playback. So thank you again for doing that as well. Immediately. Right. Thanks again, Brenda. Take care, everyone. All right. Take care. And Sue will be in chat. I'm going to move her out of our stream yard. She will be joining us in chat. So if you didn't get a chance to get your question answered, she'll be monitoring chat for us inside LinkedIn. And next, I want to pull up Renee Lindo. Hey, Renee. How are you doing today? Hi, Brenda. I'm well. I'm well. It's great to be here. Great to be here. And I, I have to comment, first of all, right over your shoulder, you've got that lovely outfit with the bright plink. I'm not sure if that's a jacket or a blouse, but I yeah. love the color. Yes, those are my brand colors. They're that fuchsia. Fuchsia. Yeah. See, there you go. I Sometimes I'd, I'll describe my brand color as like a bright pink magenta and I love yes. fuchsia. Yes. It's it just, it's like when you say teal or blue, you know, it's like different right. variations of this. Oh, in here. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm delighted to have you on with us here today. And before I, I kick over the screen, um, rather give the screen to you, you're going to be talking about looking current, feeling confident and getting hired. Such a great topic for those of us who are experience rich. I want to just share with folks the backstory. So when I do these events, I try to reach out to people in my network that um, have connections within the career industry, you know, career coaching in different areas. And I, I put out an ask and I said, who, who all do you know? And you came to me by way of, I believe it was Annette Richman. Yes. And how, how do you know Annette? Yeah, so I met Annette on LinkedIn and mm -hmm. I was on one of her uh, LinkedIn lives as well, just speaking about um, confidence and what we're wearing as what we think we're going through the, oh, it was the end of the pandemic and kind of how are we yeah. showing up for work you now that everything has changed. And so we had a conversation around that. I love it. Well, I'm I'm really looking forward to the topic and I, I'm getting to know you a little bit and there may be folks that are getting to know you as well, Renee. So before you jump into your talk, could you tell us a little bit about what you do and who do you help? Absolutely. So I say I, I guide professionals on their style journey from confused and overwhelmed to confident and killing it to really help them to align their personal brand with mm -hmm. their image and how they show up. Um, so my I and that's what I do. I love fashion and style. I come from a corporate background of um, pharmaceutical sales leadership. And I really wanted to and I love fashion and style. So I said, you know, I wanted to really be able to marry my love and, for, and passion for that with my corporate background and really help professionals to show up well for themselves. And so here I am. Working well, on here you are. <laughs> well, let's let's jump in. And what I'm going to do now, Renee, is I'm going to pull myself off screen. I'll still be in the background here and I'll, I'll give you the screen for about the next 20 minutes and then I'll come back on and do some Q&A. How does that sound? Perfect. All right. Go ahead and you can take us from here. Awesome. So thank you so much, Brenda. It is great to be here. Great to I love this topic. Right. Um, great to be a part of the panel of this LinkedIn live -a for experience rich job seekers. Yeah, experience, experience with job seekers. Uh, it's a, it's a, and being able to talk about a topic that I am passionate about and that I really know firsthand, it, it brings me great joy to do so. Uh, you know, by as I as I mentioned before, or I should say, I'm going to talk about style and our ability to tap into the power of our style and to use style as a tool, as experienced job seekers or job or professionals anywhere. Um, so as I said, my backstory is corporate as a national sales director. And so I know the importance of when I looked good, when I felt good, how it changed the game, right? The confidence it gave me to walk into spaces where I was many times the only, or to negotiate big deals or to close, close sales calls, uh, to have difficult conversations with direct reports. When we really tap into the power of our style, the confidence it gives us, it really opens up what we're available for and it changes the game. So with my time here today, 
I'm really going to share probably a little different perspective on style and how to use style and to share some tips on how you as experienced rich job seekers can also use your style in this job market. And I say job market because, of course, it is more than just the interview, right? And when we're in the job market, we are networking, whether it be um, in-person coffee meetings or online doing quick coffee chats, or we are uh, net being going at, going to networking events in person, online, doing LinkedIn lives, being live. So we're really putting ourselves out there. And our style and how we show up is a big part of that. And so hopefully you'll get some great tips and I'm always available for any questions or comments after uh, that we can, that I can help you through. Uh, so let's just, let's start at the beginning, right? Style. What is style? And I've heard, a, I heard a definition of style before that I thought was really great when they said style is how you say who you are without speaking, right? It's how you say who you are without speaking. And when you think about that, that really is the case because when we show up, before we even open our mouths, people see us. And uh, data tells us it's just seven seconds. Within seven seconds, people start to make assumptions. And what, what are they thinking? They are saying four things really came out in the, in the data. Are you trustworthy? Are you likable? Are you confident? And are you competent? So all of those things, which are really pretty important, people are deciding before you even open your mouth. So before you can share your experience, before you can dazzle them with your wits, they've already started to make uh, make assumptions. And we know that. So I see it as our style, as a, uh, a big communication piece. It is how we communicate. It's how we say who we are. It's how we, we tell others who we are, what, what we value, and what we respect. Uh, it's also our, part of our personal brand. I see it's the packaging of our brand. Again, it's the first thing that people see. Uh, and it's the messaging. And I want everyone to really embrace the fact that we own our message, right? We own the story that people are going to tell about us by the way we show up. Uh, first impressions. So seven seconds, right? So it's, it's really quick. So what I want you to think about is... Um, your style is a tool. It's a tool. It's a tool that you can use to really tell your story. Um, so we're leading when we're when we are applying for jobs. We're in that job market. We we've spent all this time really perfecting our resume. You know, having career coaches. We're career creating a great LinkedIn profile. We're networking. We're done. We're doing all the things, and our style and our image really is, uh, many times is that piece that is overlooked. And I really want to put to you that it is really a part of our overall career success strategy. Because really, if everything is shiny and fabulous and wonderful, you have the resume, you have the LinkedIn profile, and then when you show up, there is a disconnect or you don't look like what people are expecting or what they want. There really is a disconnect. And so we're going to hopefully through what I'm going to share today, help you to get closer and to really have some great alignment with uh, how you're showing up and, and what you're wearing. So as an experienced, rich professional, uh, that really that really is what our strong suit is, right? It's the experience. All of the time we've spent developing our skills is huge. It is, it's really our leading point. But what we don't want is for employers, businesses to think that because we have all this experience, we are dated or we are set in our ways or we are not, uh, willing to learn, right? And that's the other thing. I talked about the fact that people make decisions up, decisions, sorry, decisions about us really quickly. So we don't, we, what we don't want them to think about is that because we have all this experience, we are dated. If you, when you show up dated, people automatically assume if you look dated, your skill set is also dated, right? And that's really, that's really a big piece. That's what we don't want. We have great experience. We have great, we have great skills, and we are with it. We have our finger on the pulse. We know what's happening. We can flex. We are vibrant, and still have a lot to share and offer to businesses and employ employers. So, how do we do that? Uh, when we when we think about our style, right? There are a few. There are a few things I'd say. Well, several, but a few that I'll bring up today. That. 
we know that businesses and employers are looking for with employees. They want somebody who's adaptable, right? That adaptable is one of those keys. And when you're able to use your style to show that, you know, you're not stuck in your stuck in your old ways, you're not stuck in just because this worked, I'm going to keep doing it. Showing adaptability, being open also to incorporating some, some trends incorporating some new new ways of dressing you're you're with it right those are key things that that people and even subjectively that they key into and they see and makes a difference so adaptability being open employees are looking for people who are open minded they are willing to try new things they are they have that growth mindset not just fixed mindset and again our style being able to incorporate incorporate new things being open being that we are we have our finger on the pulse we know what's happening right all of those things come into play as we are presenting ourselves uh for for opportunities another another point is confidence even just the confidence that we exude when we're looking good when we feel good when we know that so we have all this experience and the packaging is is on 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 brand on trend um Right, we exude a, a level of confidence that makes you a standout candidate. Right, you make a compelling story and memorable. That's also also critical pieces and, and key pieces of that whole employee uh, employee experience rich. I should say, sorry, experience rich job seeker. So, what are a few things right that we can do to kind of tweak our wardrobe? to allow us to really show up that way. And I'm not saying that we're necessarily going to be trendy, right? Because that's absolutely not what we're doing. What it is, it's using your style as a tool. It's important that we get clear on kind of what's our personal style? Who are we? How do we want to show up? How do we honor ourselves as the, the great professional we are with all of this experience? Hold true to that and then also balance off with what employers are wanting. So just a few pointers I'll share in terms of um, what we can do in terms of our style. Uh, and then I, sh I share this also with the general, general point in style and what's, it, it varies depending on our, uh, on, on the industry, right? So you can go from very formal, from banking, finance, law, all the way to very creative, maybe social media, marketing, digital marketing. So there's a huge a huge change or huge, a huge difference, I should say, in what we're wearing, what's deemed appropriate in that space. So it's important to understand your industry, industry culture, industry, and even company culture, because it can change within companies within an industry. So a few things that we can we can do. So we know that most employers since the pandemic, everything has changed and how we look, how we show up for work, what we wear to work, what's appropriate, what's what has changed. So um, that's something that you also want to be sure that you are knowledgeable of. I mean, you know what has changed and what is deemed um, acceptable, I should say. So one of the things is just overall silhouette of the pieces that you're wearing. We used to, or before in, in some of the more formal industries was a very suit, was very fitted, uh, short, cropped, tailored to the body. Now the silhouettes are much more relaxed. They are relaxed, but not sloppy, right? So much more relaxed and there's more movement. So I encourage uh, you to think about that as well. Uh, for men, maybe if they used to wear a blazer or, or suit, maybe now they're a little bit more relaxed, maybe a bomber. Even for women too, maybe instead of a blazer, it could be a bomber. Think about... Um, if you were, for women, if you were maybe very structured, very tailored kind of pencil skirts, now, you know, move to more A-line skirts because there are more movement. And this all goes back to coming out of the pandemic and wanting more comfort. If we've moved away from high heels, a lot of my clients moved away from very high heel shoes to footwear being maybe lower heeled, but pointy toe, it always looks a little bit more, uh, more, more, more professional more pointed toe, maybe a sling back, maybe um, a kitten heel. And then for the men, if you were wearing dress shoes before, some of the footwear also has changed to be more of a mix between more of a sneaker type and a, a leather loafer. So that kind of hybrid is also a, a good tweak that can be made. Um, accessories, uh, think about um, some of your, maybe the bag that you carry, there is some the sleek kind of tech 
bags now that that we're doing maybe a, a backpack uh, that if that kind of works with your vibe uh, your glasses that's an easy update also visit uh, an optometrist or op yeah, optometrist to kind of change your frames right S simple things that we can do like that to just update our look uh, I talked about shoes before and uh, another thing is to kind of mix some classic pieces with some trend pieces as I said this is not about trends and not wearing whole lots of trends because then you look ridiculous right you it's really about tapping into your personal style and just including some pieces that may just uh, pieces or maybe some on some colors that are kind of for the seasons whether it, we're going into spring summer maybe a little bit brighter colors uh, and again this goes back to your industry this goes back to knowing what's what is um, expected or appropriate for your industry and so and I, I mix classic and trend pieces. So think about if you're going to wear a blazer, maybe the blouse is um, has some color or maybe you're doing some color blocking. Maybe you're doing um, a, a, some details somewhere. So think about mixing classic and trends just to show that, you know, hey, I'm current. I have my finger on the pulse. I know what is happening. Uh, I'm not stuck in wherever that was, right? Um, and it's fine that may have worked then but you want to you want in my mind and when i work with clients you want to make it as easy for your employer or whoever you have that conversation with to see you in their role to see you in their in their space to see you fitting in easily well um, especially as you're going through that process and by your, your style is one of the ways that you can absolutely do that um and, you know, I, I just I, th I think one of the to kind of wrap everything up and kind of put it together, you know, it's important that we really think about our style, how we want to show up um, and balance that with what is what our employers, what businesses, what they are also what's appropriate for them. And when we're able to do the, to do that, we're really able to create a situation where we're showing up as our best because when we're comfortable. Uh, wearing clothing that supports our body, supports our shape, supports um, how we the message that we want to send, and we, we we're able to confidently exude that when we're talking to our employers. It's a it's a really a great space to be. So I've created a framework when I work with clients that I call your style story because we really are telling a story. We're telling a story every day, and it, your style is a piece of that right a framework like we talk about your plan right you want to get clear on who is who am i who am i how do i want to work move through the world how do i want to show up for these interviews or these uh job seeking opportunities so we get clear on that just like any story you get clear on a, you have a plan first and then you have a scene everything happens in a scene so we talk about your closet get rid of stuff that really is no longer your vibe Right, that doesn't serve you that that you no longer want to move through the world with so clear out your closet then talk then we talk about the main character being you right these employee sorry experience rich uh job seeker understand how to dress your body understand what colors look great and you understand uh what's best for you because you are the star of the show right so you want to spend time to really develop and think about your your look uh, and then we talk about wardrobing, right? Putting pieces together that makes it easy, that really speak to who you are, and then also using accessories. So that's one of my leave behinds. It's just a, a, a walkthrough to help you to really get clear on your, your style story, to develop a compelling, clear uh, story. And um, and really, if you when you manage your who you are, how you want to show up, you manage that along with your experience, that packaging, with what employers are looking for in terms of adaptability and openness, right? Your style really is that bridge that can bring them, bring, bring everyone, bring them all together for us first to have a really win-win situation. And you know, we invest so much time in the some of the other things, resume, um, re getting more certification, all of that. I encourage you to think about your style, think about how you're showing up to really put a beautiful bow on that package so that it's a great offering for prospective employers. And then with that, I'll take questions. Um, actually, before questions, Brenda, something else I'd say is that, you know, I shared a lot. I tried to go really quickly so we'd have time for questions as well. 
um it's a lot to think of like well i don't know what the trends are or i don't know what what would i wear i have no clue i encourage you to you know just keep just look around and and see what others are wearing and I encourage you to follow professionals like myself, where you know, we have a newsletter. I have a newsletter that I send out to my folks with their follow me on LinkedIn, that send spend tons of tons of posts about kind of how to be current, especially for people over 40 professionals who want to show up, you know, in, in their best. So I encourage you to to do that as well. It helps. So you don't have to do all of the work, right? It's done for you already and it's just easy. Yeah, that's awesome. And I, I I was like jotting notes down as you were talking. Um, when you and I we chatted before I booked you because I always like I I you know check yeah. out people. I'm like, is this a good person topic? I'm like, do you work with job seekers? I want to make sure because you're like an image and stylist. And right off the bat, you were talking about as and, and we're talking to experienced rich job seekers, individuals who are age 40 plus, 50 plus, 60 plus. Okay, I'm in the category. Yep. And all of us, we reach a certain age where your weight doesn't really fluctuate as much right. anymore. Unless you're in a weight loss journey or you've had kids right. and you're losing. It. I mean, you pretty much, you get to your size and then you're in your size. And I, I joke with my kids because when they were little, Renee, like it was like every season you had to buy them a new wardrobe. Yes. And, yes. and we would- and we eventually we figured out like the mom to mom sales and, you know, like, cause you're only going to wear it for six months maximum, you know, you're yeah. not going to get into it. But when we get older, ex excuse me, experience rich, when we get more experience rich, we don't have to buy new clothes all the time because our clothes still fit. Right. And if it fits, I'm going to wear it. And I love your, your statement of you're making a first impression with people in the first seven seconds. Absolutely. Right. And there's data, right? There's good data that says that happens. And then and, what are people thinking about? Yeah. And, and they may not know. And there's so many other points that you talked to, too. If if you look dated, I'm looking down at my nose as I'm, I'm repeating this. If you look yeah. dated, they assume yep. that your skills are dated, too. Absolutely. They assume. And it's the same. I mean, a lot of times when I'm working with people on their LinkedIn profiles, I look at their headshot photo and I say, your photo really should be within the past five years. How long ago was it taken? And I know, Renee, that it's like 10 yeah. or 15 or 20 yeah. years. I can tell because I'm looking tell. at the person and it's the same thing. And they'll always say, it was probably about five years ago. <laughs> you know, they will never admit yeah. it. But it's yeah. the same thing about your clothing. You might think it's a classic, but it was it, it was a trending style or pattern right. or something that yes. is no longer. So I love that you said, like, ask the experts, ask, yeah. uh, ask other people their opinions and just say, yeah what do you think of this? I'm thinking yeah. about wearing this for an interview. What do you think of it? Like give people and like be open and right. you might not hear something that yeah. you might not hear something that you like, you know, they might say, you know, well, Aunt Brenda, people don't wear suits like that anymore, right. you know? Yeah. And, and, that's it. and it's something as simple, right? Cause I mean, you may have a suit on it, but it may be that very tailored, very fitted yeah. very top suit. We're not doing that anymore. And it's been a few years. And I'm not saying that you're jumping from trend to trend to trend, but the right. look known has been for years. It's a little bit more oversized, a little bit more relaxed. Um, and even if we're we're wearing blazers, but they look different. The cut is different, right? And so those Absolutely. things just show that I'm with it. I am not necessarily, I keep saying it's not, I'm not saying that you're to be trendy and follow all the trends, mm -hmm. but you definitely don't want to look dated. So I'm looking through questions right now, and I can't tell you how many people are asking this question, both women and men. What do you recommend for a virtual interview? And, and there's one from okay. Al. Here's another similar question from, from Lindsay, another one from Melissa. So recommendations, and some people are even commenting on, you know, like the, the business on the top and the pajama pants on the bottom. <laughs> um, so what's your advice for, for that, uh, Renee? I've, you know, that's a tough one because... It, it it really varies by industry, right? Yeah. I I when I advise clients, I think about it as whatever you would what whatever you'd wear to an in person interview. I that's what I'd recommend for virtual. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you want to think about your backgrounds, you want to think about not wearing lines that go across because it causes the screen to kind of to move in front of you. Mm -hmm. um, you want or things that don't clang and make make a lot of noise when you on your like long earrings or dangly earrings anything with logos um mm -hmm. a big tip is to ensure that for your zoom interviews that you actually sit in the outfit before the interview and not just put it on and sit because okay. when your outfit doesn't necessarily translate when you're standing as to when you're sitting when you're sitting for an hour 
right? Sometimes you, if you know, if if you have buttons for women, it may open and gape. Uh, so, and then, or if you sit and then the skirts right up, or you're you're constantly pulling up or down, those things are distracting. So you want That's to do a dry point. run before. Mm-hmm. I like to, for interviews. I like to clean. I like to advise solid colors. Uh, you have your light in front of you, so many times. Uh, if you, you you want to show up against your background, you mm-hmm. want them to, to look at your face. Uh, so there's things like that. So I'd say we're color, we're solid colors. Stay away from lots of big, heavy pattern, even though I have on my stripes. But, <laughs> but you know what? But this is the industry that you work in. So you can yeah. take some some liberties. Right. On that. That's why I say, right, it really depends on your industry. If you're, if you're in social media marketing, digital marketing, that's a much more creative industry, right? So there's more leeway for you to show up with a little bit more of your personality. Uh, if you are one of the more formal industries and you want to show up again more in line with that and what is acceptable or expected, mm-hmm. uh, right? So, and then you, how you find out, you ask your recruiter, you ask your the person, whoever gave you the, the interview, get some insight from them. Yeah. And, and Brenda, you had mentioned before also about asking people, how did this look? I encourage you to, some people may not know. So ask the professionals, right? Yeah. Ask the recruiter, they, they'll be able to give you, or stylists like myself, be able to give you better guidance. Yeah, and we're gonna do one or two more questions, but before we do so, I wanna just, um, Linda, who's in the wings right now, she's in our green room. So I'm gonna bring Linda up on screen just to make sure that we can see and hear Linda and she can see and hear us. Hey, Linda, how are you? I'm great. This is a great program so far. I'm really excited by everything I've learned. Oh. Well, I'm looking forward to your session. I'm going to put you back in the green room and we'll hear from you in just a few minutes, if that's okay, Linda. Perfect. All right, great. Thank you. Okay, so I did see, I I saw one person saying, why are we talking about fashion for a whole session? Because, because this is an important topic. I mean, when we talk about experience rich, we're reframing the way that we call ourselves. We're not calling ourselves mature job seekers or older workers or things like that. We're reframing the way that we put ourselves forward. And part of that reframing Yeah, it's what you look like online. It's your LinkedIn profile. It's your resume, but also it's it's this package, right? Yeah, it's Renee. It's what you said in the first seven seconds. People are making an impression. When you all came on the LinkedIn session today, when you first heard from me, you made an impression in seven seconds. When Renee first came on screen, you made an impression in seven seconds. We do this in our lives, right? We do this. We're walking on the street. It's a part of human nature. It, it, It it happens. It and happens. And and, and, why, that. and why we're dedicating? Because there are things that this could be one of the things that is holding you back. This could be and one of the know. reasons you're getting a first interview and you're not moving to a second interview because they're never going to say you, you right. look dated. Yes. You don't look like you're keeping up with the technology. And, exactly. and they may not even know why they're feeling that way. Yes. But it's because Thank of you. this. Thank right? you. And that's it. So many times we are not even given opportunities and we don't know why. We, the people just don't see us in the role. They don't think yeah. that we would we have the skills. Yeah. All the things that I mentioned before. I, I did see one question coming in and I want to see if I can find it again. But someone said that they were in a job interview with an individual and the person showed up in very. Oh, here it is right here from Melissa. Um, the person interviewing them was dressed very casually, hoodie, shorts. Um, would you change what you would wear to an interview, Renee, based on what you know the culture to be? Could you, could you be more casual or should you always go with your A game? What do you think? No, I, I, I think you need to, well, you need to understand the culture and the, mm-hmm. um, the culture of, of where you're interviewing. Like if it's somewhere, something that's very casually, you wear a, a suit, then there's right away, there's not a, there's not a good fit. They're going to wonder if, did you do your research? Do you know what you're getting into? Do you know what the job is about? Do you know what our culture is? Yeah. Right. So I would definitely, if it's a place that's very casual, now coming to an interview in a hoodie and shorts, mm, I don't know. I, I find that maybe maybe disrespectful or, you know, I don't know what the conversation was. It's, like I mean, it's, before, it's, I think it's, it it's generational too. I think generationally, the, the younger, I don't want to say the kids because they're adults, but the younger generation, they're even okay with texting acronyms and no, pronu- I mean, no right. punctuate. And we're like, I don't know about this, but. <laughs> And then I think it's also an opportunity for you to think about, okay, do I want to work in this space? Is this space yeah. going to allow, if I'm going to be wearing hood design thing to work, does that really allow me to show up as my best? Uh, yeah. Do I feel like I'm working? Because I've worked with clients like that as well. They've gotten a job with Google and we we turned, we and they're coming from banking. And so we, we have to kind of tweak, what does that look like? 
they don't want to wear jeans and hoodies to work. You know, they're working and it's tech. So we made it, you know, mm-hmm. for appropriate for them. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to pull two final comments and then we're going to um, just re- get some reminders about working with you here. But um, I want to just call out one. Valerie is saying the idea of communicating what you are saying without speaking is a very valuable, she loves the call out. And I, and I like, when I was planning the day today, I didn't want it all just to be career coaches and resume writers. I'm like, I wanted to enact all, I wanted to get fires off in all the little areas of your brain thinking differently yeah. about your job search. Cause I really want to help you. And related to that, this one, I can't see the person's name, but this is exactly why we do the things that we do in this LinkedIn live Ageism. Yeah, it does exist. It's out there. And I was just having a conversation with someone the other day who's hiring for and by the way, if anyone on the call is interested and in, in qualified, they're looking for somebody to work in communications and marketing with some project management skills. And the challenge they have is the people they hire are always like a couple of years out of college and they'll stay for six months and they'll leave. And I said, why don't you hire an experienced rich candidate? Because they're not going to leave, you know, and, and sometimes getting over that hurdle of, you know, a, a mature, mature candidate or older worker. Like we, yeah, we don't want to be pretending to be something that we're not, but I think we want to put our best face forward, right? Yes, Renee, that's the point exactly. we're getting at. That's exactly mm-hmm. my point. We have the experience. That's where we're leading from that. That's our strong suit, right? Tons of great yeah. experience. But we also want to show that we are hip. We're with it, with the, all that and with that great experience. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, this has just been a great conversation. I know there are people walking away with some new takeaways and you might have shook them a little bit, like even things like talk to your optometrist about what I I even do that when I go get my hair done. I'm like, when they say, what do you want done? I'm like, I just want to trim, but make sure I look contemporary. I want to look like that 40, almost 50 year old woman who's like not keeping up, like go ahead and do what you think you need to. But I think being open to the expert advice is so important. So on that note, Renee, if there are people who are interested in working with you, can you remind us what are the services that you offer? Yeah, sure. So my signature service is the level up your style. So we walk through kind of getting clear on what your style is. We'll do a a style board. We talk about your personal brand. Uh, You get a virtual closet. We shop, I'll shop for you, put outfits in there and really create something a, a, a package and, and your wardrobe that works for you wonderful and um i know you had mentioned um some some free resources yeah. as well and you'll be yeah. making those available to us yeah, yep those are available uh in your link and it's really the your style story how to create a really compelling mm-hmm. and confident style story Awesome. And I will include the link to get those in just a moment where you can register to get the playbacks. And I'm showing your LinkedIn profile up on screen with folks as well. And are you open to connecting with individuals right now? Absolutely. I'd love to connect any follow up questions, please. Mm-hmm. All right. Wonderful. And you'll be joining us out in the chat on LinkedIn. Yes, I will be there. And reminder for those that if you do visit Renee's profile, she's got creator mode turned on. So you'll need to click on the more button. You're not going to see connect. You're going to see follow, but go under the more button. And then there'll be an option that will say personalized invite or connect. Just mention, hey, I saw you on the live event with Brenda and she'll know where you came from. So Renee, this has been such a great conversation. Thank you so much. Awesome. For Thank sharing you. Your Thanks, Brenda. Take care. All right, Renee, I'm going to move you off of screen here and then I'm going to pull in Linda next and We're going to keep everything going along. Are you guys enjoying this? I know that last topic was a little different. Like we're going to talk about fashion. Yeah, we're going to talk about fashion because some of us need to hear about this. We need to hear about our images and whatnot. Um, So I want to keep you on your toes. I want to bring in different people, different subjects, and I want to help you in different ways. I I hope you weren't just coming out thinking this was going to be a workshop on resume rewriting or not using an AOL because it's a dated email. Use a Gmail, by the way. You should do that. You should not use an AOL. You should use a Gmail. But I really wanted to bring on people with a variety of different expertise and background to join us. And next up, we have Linda Brubaker. And Linda, I'm trying to remember how we first crossed paths. I know you're a part of my Friday VIP job seeker community. Mm -hmm. But prior to that, do you remember how we first started interacting? I think you may have commented on one of the posts that I had out there. Might have been. I think that sounds about, I guess I don't know if it was, I I usually can like remember, like with Renee, I remember the introduction from Annette, but I think you and I, I just something, there was a vibe, you know, it was right away. I was like, oh, Linda's a cool person. I want to hang out with her. And we started connecting and she comes out to our Friday calls right now and offers advice to job seekers. And I said, hey, do you want to come on this LinkedIn Live-a-thon and bring in a topic? And Linda said, sure. And you guys are going to love this. T- I should say people because there's not just guys, there's men and women. You people are going to love this topic. 
because Lynn is going to be talking about dealing with the terrible twos of job search, not T-W-O, but T-O-O. Too old, too experienced, and too expensive. Now, before we jump in on that, Linda, can you tell us a little bit about what do you do and who do you work with? Okay, so I'm the experienced, rich person that you all are talking about. I mean, Ken talked about trying to make career change. This is probably my third position or third, fourth role since I've turned experience rich. So I'm an ex-headhunter, an ex-internal recruiter. I've been a hiring manager. Um, and now I'm doing this job search coaching. And what my skill set is, is bringing people the experience from all sides of the desk, mm -hmm. that different kind of a perspective. Because what I do is I work with you one-on-one -on -one to help discover and showcase those transferable skills to find that next forever job. That's awesome. Well, I'm going to turn the floor over to you, Linda. And are you sharing a slide deck? Am I remembering correctly? Is there something I you want to, well, let's, let's get you sharing that up on screen and I'll make sure we're all set here before I pull myself off of the screen. So go ahead and click on share to bring that up. And while you're doing so, I'm just going to remind folks, if you're joining us late, we are doing a LinkedIn live -a-thon from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. today. If you join late and you want to get the resources from previous presenters, just go to mellermarketing.com slash Lil Rich, L-I-L Rich. The link, L-I-L stands for LinkedIn Live. And then the word rich, all one word, all lowercase, making it super easy for you. All right. I think I see this up on screen. Are you able to navigate from here, Linda? And I'm going to take myself Hi. off. Perfect. All right. Perfect. I'll be back in about 20 minutes then. Sounds great. So one of the things that I've discovered is that I love being at this part of the program because I can build on things that everybody else has said. If you're here because you're experience rich, you truly are not alone. And I have to tell you that being experience rich in job search truly is not fatal. It's something that you can easily work around. Now, am I going to tell you that being older may not affect your job search? I can't tell you that. Can I tell you that ageism in job search doesn't exist? I can't tell you that either. But what I can tell you is that there are ways you can deal with some of those concerns that people have about us being of a certain age. And you can do that and showcase your skills, your transferable skills, and really land those positions. A number of the people that I've worked with have done that. So what are the terrible twos of job search? I'm sure we all have them, right? You've probably heard them before. In fact, if you could, in the chat, tell me, how many of you have either thought about these terms, being too old, too experienced, or you're concerned that people think that you're too expensive? If you have, You'll notice by looking at the chat, you're truly not alone. Lots of people are feeling exactly the same thing. And those twos sometimes hold us back. It's not that the job search, the recruiter is really concerned about that or the hiring manager, sometimes they are, but it's also us who's concerned that that's the reason. And so we hesitate a little bit. What I want you to do is remember that you have some great experience. That's what being experience rich is all about. And the idea is it's up to you to channel that experience, talk about that experience in ways that make it make sense for the next job you're looking at. There are other twos that are out there. So when people say that you're too old, too experienced, too expensive, that's a really code for saying, ah, you're too set in your ways. You don't know how to use technology. You've always done things exactly the same way, so you can't or won't learn anything new, or you'll get bored. The job doesn't include everything you've ever done before, so it's not going to make you stay. You won't be around for a while. Or just as Renee was talking about in other ways, or Joey, or... Um, other speakers, Sue, the idea is you have to be able to fit into that culture, that environment. And so sometimes they're concerned that if we're of a certain age, if we're experience rich, we won't fit in with their employees and their environment. And then there's that terrible concern that some hiring managers have if they're hiring somebody who's younger than they are, more experienced than they are, who comes from a different kind of a background than they have, some hiring managers, let's face it, are concerned that those of us who are experience rich may come in and tell them what to do. And they don't want that kind of an idea. 
They want somebody who wants to do the job that they have to do and be able to support them. So here's the bottom line. Those of us who are experienced rich want to talk about everything we've done and you should rightfully be proud of everything you've done. The issue is that new employers don't care about that. They honestly don't care about everything you've ever done. They care only about what it is you can do for them. And if you want to deal with the too old, too experienced, too expensive aspects of job search, you need to be able to pull it back just a little bit. And that's not exactly the way I wanted to phrase it, but the idea is you need to be able to showcase what it is you can do for them. That's what their bottom line is. So we're we're not going to go through some of the the ideas about job search, you already know how not to aid yourself on a resume. You know not to change to change your email address to something that is more Gmail based. You know not to include a resume, I mean, a, an objective. You know not to say references will be provided when required. But remember that just as Renee was talking about in terms of your appearance, if you have seven seconds to grab their attention, you have seven seconds to grab their attention in your resume. And what you need to do then is be able to focus right up top on what you can do for them. Your keywords, your skills, your experience should all be related to the new job. In fact, I highly recommend that one of the things you do is pull some of those words from that posting to show that you really understand what the job is all about and that you've got that visual match between what it is they're looking for and what you can do and that you're limiting those core skills, not to everything you've ever done, but to what this specific job is looking for. And by the same token, when we were talking about highlighting those accomplishments, and Sue, I love the way you talked about turning doing into done, into action. That's what you wanna do here as well. And you want to make sure that those accomplishments that you're talking about really relate to the new job. And you also know that you want to limit the experience on your resume. And I know that for some of us that hurts. But the idea is if it's older than 10 to 15 years, it's not as relevant in the minds of other people necessarily, but more importantly, on your written materials, it ages you. Now, is there a way to highlight some of that older experience as well without aging you? Absolutely. Add another section on your resume called additional related experience. You don't have to include everything. Don't include dates. Don't include bullets. Just include the name of the company, your job title, and that allows you to go back and refer to it in either an accomplishment, in a skill, or in your interview answers without aging you as part of that process. Now, in terms of interview tips, you've all heard these before, but I want to change your mindset a little bit. We've heard about a star story, right? Situation task, action, result. As you get to become experience rich, you need to add another T at the end because it's important to make sure that everything you're talking about is transferable to the job you're looking for. It's up to you to provide that tie-in. So when you're putting together the accomplishments on your resume, when you're putting together the bullet points, when you're putting together your interview stories, make sure that all of those stories are relevant to the job you're looking for and that what you're talking about is relatable to them. Now, I had one job seeker who was so excited about some of the experience that she had that she wanted to use an example because it was the best example that she had. And she talked about as a salesperson being able to pull all of the contacts from her Rolodex. And the people on the other side of the, the table looked at her and said, now what's Rolodex? It aged her immediately without being able to let her make the point, which was that she has a lot of contacts that she can reach out to. So that goes back to the idea of not being tech savvy. We need to be able to make sure that regardless of where we are in the process, resume, LinkedIn, interview, that everything you do is relevant to the job you're looking at and as often as we can using their language too. So one of the concerns that a lot of people have, and I'm going to go through these very quickly, is just the idea that how do you present yourself? 
Remember, Joey talked about never saying no or but. I agree with him. You want to frame your experience in that yes and. Yes and is incredibly powerful. So if they're asking, well, you might not fit in here or that's what their thought is. So give them an example of how you had to learn something new as one of your accomplishments. Give them an example of how you implemented change. Again, they're thinking that you aren't adaptable to change. Show them that you are. Yes and also says you're bringing your A game, your experience, the best of what you know, and even though it isn't in their industry or in that particular job, the yes and says, I bring the best of what I have, and then I pick up from you those things that are important for this individual job or this industry. So we blend the best of both worlds. You're bringing your experience, you're bringing your energy, your enthusiasm, your knowledge, your ability to adapt that you've learned by being experience rich into every situation that you're talking about. Those will help you stand out in the process. Now, in one of the next presentations, you're going to hear about the idea of how do you continue to get that training and being open to new training, adding new skills to your, your portfolio is another way that you demonstrate that being experience rich is something that will help you in the new job because you are open to new ideas to constantly picking up something new and then building on those in terms of what you can bring for the job. Too old. So let's talk about those individually. A lot of us feel as though job market is really aimed at those who are a lot younger than we are. And sometimes it may seem that way, especially when you see a posting that says no experience necessary. We know that we have lots of great experience to provide. And so one of the things that really helps us to get our foot in the door and to get that offer is to demonstrate not only that you can learn, that you can adapt, but by focusing in on you, what you have for this particular job and what this job needs and what you can bring. And I will tell you that that kind of thing really does work. It goes to that whole idea of being too experienced. Remember that I said earlier that some people may concern that being too experienced, too, ha too uh, experience rich perhaps, may threaten the hiring manager or other members of the hiring team, or that they're going to be concerned that you're going to get bored and leave. The idea is if you focus in on what this job needs and what you bring, and more importantly, how this job fits exactly what you'd want to do right now, then that's what's important and that's what's going to keep you moving forward in the process. Too expensive? Mm -hmm. We all know that. Experience helps to bring that salary level up. So it's important for you before you go into these to know what your worth is and to know what the potential salary range for the job is. Asking about salary expectations in a job search from the company's perspective, it's a trick question. They ask that question so that they can screen you out. Your best bet is to know what your worth is and to know what that job is all about. If you can't find that information, there are some websites out there that will help you. And here's a trick. As more and more states are beginning to implement the fact that companies have to list the salary ranges on their postings, yay, Illinois, you've got that legislation in process it's gonna be easier for us to know what that job is worth so you can make your decisions and position yourself appropriately. If your state isn't there yet, take a look at, for Illinois, for example, take a look at Colorado. Cost of living is very similar and it gives you an idea at least of what the ranges are because Colorado does require people to post those ranges. Now that whole idea about asking for salary is important from several perspectives. Number one, you want to make sure that you aren't pricing yourself out of the market, but you also want, don't want to price yourself under the market either. The important thing, the overall thing that you need to remember is that as an experienced rich job seeker, you need to demonstrate that you want this job, not just any job, but this job and all of your materials, all of your comments, everything you do has to be focused on this job 
and what you bring to this job. Remember, it's not about everything you've ever done. It's what you can do for them. And the more you can demonstrate that, the more you can counteract the terrible twos, the too old, the too experienced, the too expensive. Oh my gosh. Such a great time. I, I don't, didn't you all love the topic to the terrible twos? It reminds me of, I know my parent, my kids are getting a little older now, Linda. So my first reaction was the terrible twos of toddlerhood which if you're a parent, you can, you know, just ride the wave, my friend. It's, <laughs> and it's, it's fun. And you look back and you realize the little kid problems become bigger kid problems as they get older. But it was a nice look back at that. And, and, you know, thinking of where we are all right now, if you're, if you're struggling with these things, and I love how you made it kind of a playful topic, but it's, it's also a very approachable way of, of, a lot of the frustrations that folks are having on here. So what I want to do now is um, if it's okay with you, we'll do some questions, Linda, would that be all right with you? All right. So I'm going to just uh, remind everyone, if you have a question for Linda, feel free to use this, the uh, chat feature inside of LinkedIn. So I, what I'm doing is I'm going inside LinkedIn and in StreamYard brings your comments to us. It takes about 30 seconds from the time I say, Hey, drop your questions inside chat. For, the, for you to hear me saying is there's a little bit of a delay. It's almost like when you're watching like the Grammy or the Emmys and they have the time delay because sometimes the celebrities swear. <laughs> so StreamYard does the same thing. They gave us a little bit of a delay from the time we go live, not because they're afraid, afraid of profanity. It's just the process of changing the baton from one platform to another. It does take a little bit of time on that. So if you do have a question or a comment on anything that Linda shared, if you love the topic, um, please please feel free to bring it up. So I see one question I want to bring in um, right on off the bat here. Thoughts on embracing your gray hair. Any thoughts on that, Linda? I know this, I is, think, this is getting into image, but what are your thoughts on that? I think it really is up to you. I think that gray hair looks wonderful on a lot of people. I will tell you that um, I am gray, but I color my hair, not because I'm worried about how old I look, but because my hair is so white that it mm -hmm. blends in with the color of my skin. I yeah. also made a promise to my daughter many years ago that I wasn't going to co stop coloring my hair until she got married and she's not there yet. <laughs> Fair enough. That's good. And I see a lot more women nowadays embracing gray, which is awesome. Um, and men do it and they get this, you know, oh, you look distinguished with your salt and pepper hair. And, you know, it's I mean, wrinkles are a gift that we are given, my friend. It means that you are still here and you are still around. And if you have laugh lines, it means that you've laughed a lot. And if you have gray hair, it means you're still on this earth and you're still aging. And that's a good thing. It beats the alternative is what I always say. But it, I think a lot of times it's um, as you were talking about, it's it's making sure that you're, you're doing things in the best light possible. And um Right? right. And it's the best life possible for you. If you're comfortable, and so many people are comfortable, I wish I was, are comfortable embracing their gray hair, it looks beautiful. Okay. I started going gray in my early 30s. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I've been doing this for a long time. It's hard for me to give it up. But the idea that you're comfortable with it, I think it's fantastic. We've earned those grays. We've earned our experience. Showcase it because you're beautiful no matter what you are. Yeah. And I, I see a couple more comments coming in. I'm going to start to move us over to Melissa saying, I've heard too experienced and too expensive over and over. And Linda, I kind of feel like sometimes this might be verbalized. You know, you have too, you know, too much experience. And sometimes I think it might not be verbalized. You're being screened out before even being the chance to to apply for or consider a job. And I know that you said you used to work in recruiting. So what are your thoughts on in a cover letter? Should we say, I know you're only looking for three to five. Should we say, and I know I have 30 or what are your thoughts there? Should no. we address it or not? So I'm a, an avoider in the sense. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that if you're making your materials, your resume, your cover letter, focus in on what they're looking for. And you're only including 10 to 15 years of experience on your resume and your LinkedIn profile. I don't care how much experience you actually have. I care what you can do for me. And you're showcasing what's important for me. Mm -hmm. I don't think you ought to ever say that you have 20 or 30 years of experience, especially if the job says they're only looking for five. Right. What you want to do is you want to highlight why this is the role you want right now. And sometimes that means that you're taking a career pivot and absolutely, you can say that in your cover letter. You can say, 
talk about your journey to get from here to there. And many of us don't have a straight line. I think Sue was talking about that. Many career paths go to the side rather than up. And for this particular point in your career, I think it works. We're mm -hmm. still at the stage too, where we can co go back onto that COVID response. Mm -hmm. One of the things COVID taught us was what's really important in a job moving forward. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly where I want to be right now. And that helps you reframe the situation. That's a good point. All right. I'm going to keep us into a couple more. There's so much in, happening in here. Actually, let me do one quick thing. Let's see. Yep. We do have Diana. Diana's kind of waiting in the wings for us. I'm going to bring you on screen real quick, Diana, just to say hi. Make sure we can do a quick audio check. Hey, Diana, how are you? Can you hear me okay? Yep. Yep. Sorry, we're doing the we're doing the Wilson from Home Improvement where the comments kind of hiding a little bit of right, your face. Exactly. <laughs> but I'm gonna move you back into the green room. We'll bring you back in just a few minutes, okay? Perfect. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, if you all remember that show, am I dating myself by saying that, Linda? Home improvement, it's not on the air anymore. <laughs> but it's um, on TV or so you're it's, watching. It's still right? like on the re reruns. I don't know if we call them that replays or you know, the classic TVs or whatever, but um the character would be talking over his fence to his neighbor, Wilson, and we'd never see Wilson's face. You'd only see his eyes because that's the size of the fence. So a lot of times I joke in StreamYard when comments come up, especially if they're longer comments, we're not able to see over the top of them. Um, let me just go on to a couple of additional comments. I feel like I started these, but StreamYard's not, oh, they're at the bottom of my list. Okay. So when you were doing recruiting, Linda, did you use LinkedIn Recruiter? For, for screening candidates? Uh, I did not. I've okay. never used LinkedIn Recruiter through any of my search, but I do use um, a variety of other tools that are out there. LinkedIn Recruiter, I think, is a very good one, and it's one, yeah. I'm going to be honest, that I need to learn more about. <laughs> well, I want to ask a question, and, and maybe I'll ask if there's others in the audience that are aware, can, can confirm nor deny this, but here's a related question from, from Dion, and I apologize, we're going to have to look over the top of the comment here, but Dion is saying, most companies request you apply on their website, which includes having to add dates for your education. Now, obviously, they're putting in dates so they know that you completed your education. Like, when did you complete your education? They're looking for that verification so they know it was done. Um, and then, you know, to Dion's point on here, you can derive your age from your degree. And LinkedIn does the same thing, by the way. If you put your degree in your education section, which you should put your degree, I've heard that um, by putting the dates in, it actually helps LinkedIn to serve you ads based on jobs, but it also, similar to what Deanne was just saying, people can understand what your age is. So they can kind of do the quick math, figure you were 22 when you graduated. Um, now, some people I've heard leaving their, their years of graduation off of their education section, and I've heard that can help because then they can't quite pinpoint it. But then I've also heard if you don't put the years in there, then you may not qualify if they say bachelor's degree required and recruiters are doing a search on LinkedIn recruiter. So I'll leave that to our audience to respond. Mm -hmm. I think it was Kevin Turner who said you have to put the years in there, otherwise you don't come up in search, but I'll see if anyone from the audience is aware. And if so, please drop in the comments Thank there, you. but I'm going to move us along here, Linda. Okay, so I want is what's that, that? And that if you don't have your dates in your I've not done LinkedIn Recruiter, but I have searched for people by, and looked for their degree. Yeah. And if I put in a bachelor's degree, bachelor's degree comes up, for example, even if you don't have the dates. You don't put dates. Okay, good. So I, I, I'm i not completely 100% certain on either. So I usually give people like, here's some considerations, both sides. Um, Susan has a point and, you know, she's saying, you know, thinking of eliminating my first three mm -hmm. positions. And I think the important point for Susan and for the rest, and tell me what you think, Linda, is they are no longer relevant. Exactly. Because I don't think we're trying to hide anything. We 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 are we should be happy that we are experienced rich. But I think if they're no longer relevant, that's probably that's probably a good thing to do. What do you think about that? I absolutely agree. And if they are relevant, then I would add that second section on your resume under experience. It just says additional related positions. So that Jenny, if one of those earlier positions was related to the new job, but it's you feel it's too old then just put the name of the company and the title and it still allows you to refer back to it without aging you or the experience. There you go. There's a little workaround. Um, and I, I saw this point and I, I, Angela had a couple of really good comments, by the way, Angela, I'm reading your comments. I'm like lit up on them right now, but one was Ben told that I was too old and that I looked expensive. And I want to come back to one of the points that you made 
Linda on, you should know the market value for the job. Obviously, you're trying to get the the, the highest salary you can when you come into a position. Um, but I think the point that you were trying to make is you should know the market value. You should know what you're worth and what you think the position is paying. Did I did I capture that correctly? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So and in this case, Angela, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, if, if you have any advice for for her, Linda, on if someone says you look like you're too expensive, you know, you look like you have more experience than we need. You look like you're too expensive. How, if, if at all, do you address that? So part of it is that if you're tailoring it to this job and your cover letter, your interviews, you should talk about why you want this role. At this point in your career, this is what you've done. Brenda, you talked earlier about the terrible twos with the toddlers, right? Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. In a sense, it's the same thing with the jobs. You wouldn't have applied for the job unless it was something you knew you wanted to do. And if you've done your research, you know what that range might be. So the idea is to come in and say, first of all, not talk about salary too early in the process, mm -hmm. but the, to fit what you're looking at, if they say you look too expensive, you can always be flip and say, you're right, but I'm worth it. But more importantly, the idea is what I'm expensive, what I'm providing you is the experience you're looking for. And I can do X, Y, and Z. Always yeah. bring it back to Sue's idea. What can I do for you? And give them those ideas and the expensive may go away. Yeah, I love that. And there was somebody on our Friday Job Seeker call. I'm not sure if it was Joey or who it was that said it. But when we think about experience, being experience rich is is not something that is is a negative. It's a positive because think about mm -hmm. the plane that went down in the Hudson River. I'm sure every one of those passengers on flight was was so happy that it was an experience rich pilot, that it wasn't somebody on their first or second flight because they would not have the had the experience in high in you know guiding. Uh, experience to drive them through how to do a successful landing. So I think sometimes playing up, well, you might think that, but here's what you get with me as a candidate. I'm not going to be jumping around in six months. This is what I want to do. I'm very clear on the position. I know what the market value is. So I think you're you're playing that up, right, Linda? Absolutely. And you're showing exactly how what you've done matches what it is they need. That's awesome. So I'm going to wrap us up here and we're going to get our next speaker, Diana, up on screen. But as we do that, I'm going to pull up your LinkedIn um, profile up on screen. And Linda, can you remind us, do you work with people one on one? And if so, like, could you remind us what are the services and in, in offerings that you have? Absolutely. I do work with people one on one. So I'm offering today a free um, resume review. Mm -hmm. I'd be happy to give you some advice on that. And that's going to be in whatever material Brenda sends out later. Um, I would love to connect with you. If you want to talk about how we can get together, I can do that as well. And if you're interested in the one-on-one -on -one coaching, then we can talk about that. And I'm offering a, a special on that as well. Wonderful. And Linda, we can also connect with you on LinkedIn. Are you open to new connections there too? Absolutely. Please do. And I'm another of those people that you're going to have to hit the more so that you can do the connect. And all you have to say is experience rich and I'll know where we met. Oh, I love it. That's even easier. You just say, hey, experience rich and, and they'll know where you came from. So Linda, thank you so much for all of your, your expertise and your guidance and just for the wonderful topic, you know, for for bringing in some levity on what can be a very serious <laughs> topic sometimes. I, when I saw your, your topic, I was like, oh, this is going to be awesome. And I knew that it would be, and it really was. So thank you so much for joining us today, Linda. Thank you all, everyone. I'll look at your comments in just a minute. All right. And Linda will be joining us out into LinkedIn. So if you did ask a question or had a comment, we didn't get you. No fear, because Linda will be out in the LinkedIn chat with us. And next up is Diana Stevens. Hey, Diana, how are you doing Hi. today? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. to be here. Good to Loving be all the great information from the speakers. Wonderful. Yeah, isn't it great? And we, we've been like weaving in and out of different topics. And as I said earlier, I'm trying to light up different areas of your brain and bring expertise in on different topics here today. So we're going to be changing gears and moving to Diana next. And Diana, you're going to be talking about stress relief tips. So sure. we're going to be lighting up a different area of your brain. And I got a little bit of a preview of her presentation earlier, and it's going to be such a great presentation. Now, Diana, you and I, I know that um, you're involved in some of my programs and community, but how did you and I first come into contact. Do you re recall or did we just start interacting on I, LinkedIn? I think I found you actually through doing a little search on LinkedIn of coaches 
Mm -hmm. that we're working with uh, mindfulness and things like that and mm -hmm. job search groups and whatnot. I wanted to see who was doing what. And what caught my eye initially was your checklist that you have the top 10 things to do when you are downsized, because I have one of those blogs on my website. Oh, very cool. So I thought, oh, wow, somebody's talking about the same thing I am. So eventually we met, I looked at your classes and, and uh, signed up for a couple of those. And then we got into the Friday job search group. So that's great. <laughs> That's awesome. And I'm going to drop the resource that Diana is referring to. We created this do this now checklist. It's the things that you should do now if you are laid off, if you've been let go, if you know a layoff might be coming, even if you're already in career transition and unemployed, there's some things that you should check off the list. Like nobody tells you what to do when you're let go other than here's your severance, you know, sign this paper. Yep. They might say file for unemployment, but they don't really follow up because they don't care. Like you're not their responsibility anymore. So we created a checklist. I'll drop it into the chat. Um, before I step off the screen, Diana, can you remind people, tell us a little bit about what you do and who you help? Well, what I do is a very integral part of the job search, which I think a lot of people don't always focus on. And that's the emotional side of job search as well as the stress relief side of job search. And I'm going to relate my story here while I, when I have my slides up, but um, I have actually, I'm an experienced, rich uh, professional with over 35 years in the workforce. Mm -hmm. I have been downsized five times between 2004 and 2014. And one of the reasons I'm working on this business right now is I was downsized from corporate America in December of 22. There you go. And you know what? We're glad that you're here. And and sometimes we don't plan. I mean, we don't ever plan these things, you know, but sometimes when one door closes, another door opens and you wouldn't be here where you are today if things hadn't happened the way that you did. Right. So Absolutely. so we're delighted. So I'm going to pull myself off screen, but I before I do so, I want to make sure that you can share your screen slide. So go ahead and do the share right now. And then I'll make sure that I'm pulling those up, up on screen before I pop out. And while we're waiting for Diana to do that, I'm going to pop the do this now checklist into the chat for those of you who might want to check that resource out. And it's a free download. I actually work with a variety of different experts to pull that together. So I'll put that into the, the chat and that'll be available in the resources as well. All right. So I think we got you up on screen here. I Diana. Up on screen. There you go. And I'm going to take the myself off and I'll be working. back in about 20 it. minutes. <laughs> Love it. Thanks. Well, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Diana Stevens. I'm absolutely delighted to be here. And um, what I'd like you to do for the next 15 minutes or so is to just sit back, relax, and let this information just kind of wash over you. There's a lot of good tips and tricks in here and some quotes and all kinds of things around the emotional side and stress relief techniques for job search. So um, I really invite you to embrace the present and transform your future. And I'm going to show you a number of different quotes sprinkled through this presentation. I love inspirational quotes like Joey was talking about earlier. One from Richard Branson, business opportunities are like buses. There's always another one coming, even though we may, might not feel like it all the time. And from Pima Chodron, who is a Buddhist scholar, what we call obstacles are really the way the world and our entire experience teach us when we're stuck. So a little bit more about my story. Yes, I am an experienced, rich professional. I've spent over 35 years in the uh, job market, mainly as a national account manager for a number of Fortune 500 companies that were manufacturers. I was in the fashion industry, uh, retail, uh, and then also in the CPG industry. For the last 13 years, I've been in the software as a service industry, and I've been a customer success manager for a couple of different data companies. So really from 24, 2004 to 2014, I experienced five downsizings, two of which were the company divisions closed up and three of which were they just did a reduction in force. And um, at that same time that I was going through those downsizings, I had an elder care responsibility for my mother who had Alzheimer's and was on her Alzheimer's journey from 2000 until 2016 when she passed. Also during that time, I had a personal diagnosis of breast cancer and had surgery, have recovered and I'm cancer free, I'm very, very pleased. But really uh, three of those times I did go through outplacement. It was very, very helpful in terms of the tactical side of job search, what I call 
the tactical side of job search. But in terms of the emotional support that I needed, it, ju it just wasn't there. So my mess became my mission. And I really decided that I wanted to help other job seekers navigate the emotional side and the stress side of job search. So to that end, I began my PhD program in 2019. In 2020, I wrote my dissertation, which is a mindful approach to job search. And then I founded Mindful Job Alignment, which is my company, after completing my PhD in holistic coaching in 2021. So I really have hundreds of hours of resource material on stress relief, meditation, mindfulness techniques, and a lot of soulful support. And so that is what uh, founded the business. And that is what I'm going to impart today and give you hopefully some golden nuggets. The other thing I wanted to tell you is that you can feel free to take screenshots of my presentation. I think Brenda's going to be sending these out. But if you want something in the moment, you're more than welcome to take screenshots of my slides. So some soulful insights here. Really, when things fall apart, it's the fear of unknown that causes our stress. And if we had a crystal ball to look into the future, we wouldn't be feeling as much stress because we would kind of know what's going to happen. But unfortunately, we don't have a crystal ball. So fear is a natural reaction to actually moving closer to the truth. That's from Pima Chodron. And something else you might want to consider and kind of contemplate is that if you've been downsized two times or more, you may want to consider that you're being called to do something else. And it's really worth reflecting on your life purpose and taking a look at that. Another quote from Rinpoche, who's also a Buddhist scholar, when things fall apart, we can use it as an opportunity to be open and inquisitive about what just happened and what will happen next. So in my research, I've come up with an eight step process that I work with clients on to work through the job search and the career transitions. First part being reconciling your transition and assessing your needed tactics, creating a calm space at home, reading, meditating and journaling, continuing with diet and exercise, keeping busy with a side hustle or volunteering, identifying your values and creating a job vision based on your values, and then creating a strategic action plan for your job search, and then manifesting that job search action plan through daily action steps. And we're going to go into these in a lot more detail on the next few pages. So I really work with the assumption that job search is really both an internal or a soulful or an external and a tactical process. And if you take a look at the photograph on the bottom of the slide of the railroad track, I think that's a very good visualization of what the job search really represents. You need to have both of those rails on the track working in good working order so that the train doesn't derail or crash, fall off the tracks. So you need both the soulful and you need the tactical. And what we're going to do is go through these in a lot more detail on the next few slides. But basically, the soulful is your internal part with reconciliation and meditating and taking time to think about what you want to do next. And then the external is all of the tactical steps that are really so well covered in all of the job search materials that are out there. One of the most important steps of going through a job transition is to really take time to reconcile the transition. There's a lot of data out on job search. Job loss ranks in the top 10 of life stressors, and even on some studies, it's probably in the top five. It's right along there with the death of a spouse or a loved one and also divorce. So it's really a major, major transition. It's important to take time to reconcile that and process through the five grief steps, which are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Another thought is to really understand if this is a life quake or a disruptor for you. And I have some information on a book from Bruce Feiler. He wrote a book called Life is in the Transitions. And he actually has some interesting definitions about disruptor and life quake. 
A life quake in your life is events that upend our lives. It really creates a major fundamental shift in the direction of your life and you wind up going on a different path. And some of that could be death of a key loved one. It could be divorce. It could be very serious illness, uh, accident, something like that. A disruptor is a little bit less than a life quake. It's really an event that disrupts the everyday flow of your life, but ultimately you can adjust and you can go on with your life. The other thing to consider is to evaluate your personal situation at this time and really de determine a timeline. When do you absolutely need to land a new position? And this is about taking a look at your finances, taking a look at your familial situation, taking a look at your environment and really making a plan of when do you need to land, constructing your action plan in accordance with that. It's really a good idea not to be out networking or interviewing until you've processed through the loss and then you've created a job search plan because you may risk carrying the unresolved issues unconsciously into the interview. And I think we've all met people through the job search process who have not managed that and they tend to tell their life story when they're in networking. Two great books for transition, and you can feel free to take a screenshot of this slide, are Life is in the Transitions by Bruce Feiler, which I just referenced. And then Daphne Kingma wrote a great book called The 10 Things to Do When Your Life Falls Apart. Very easy read. She's got them all lined out at 10 the 10 steps and a lot of them are are spiritual but it's an emotional and spiritual handbook and support for job search internal soulful practices this is what what i consider one of the most important parts of job search and this actually is something that you can incorporate into your life on an everyday basis and keep doing this even after you land again because these are really good stress relief techniques Create, first step is to create a calm space in your home for private space for yourself, for reflection, reading, meditation, and journaling. What you want to do is clear the clutter from the space and then repurpose it with items that uplift you and that are inspiring. And you could try diffusing calming oils in a diffuser. Uh, it's a very, very good way to, to scent the home as well as get the benefits of the olfactory through the nose um, uh, calming of the oils, which uh, I recommend lavender and Lang Lang to start with. Developing a daily meditation practice. We've heard a lot lately about meditation. Uh, it's not unattainable at all. Uh, you can do five or 10 minutes in the morning and the evening, and it will really calm you down. We do teach, I do teach meditation uh, as part of my uh, process. Yos yoga also works really well as a moving meditation. And then you can also walk a labyrinth if there's one near you. And uh, we have a lot of information on labyrinths uh, uh, at our website and be happy to help you locate one and explain more about what a labyrinth is. I do have a blog on labyrinths on my website. So if you've never seen one, there's a nice big picture of one on, on the website. Gratitude journaling is also very important. And I think we've heard some things about gratitude uh, also today, but it's something very easy that you can adopt. There's a lot of journals out that have prompts. You can also do something as simple as writing down one, two, or three things that you're grateful for in the day, because it really does help calm you. It helps calm your body, and it does shift you physiologically uh, as you shift into the gratitude, thinking about what you're happy about. It's also a good practice to set aside time each week for reading inspirational books, blogs, magazines, websites, motivational quotes. Um, it's good to keep a collection of these and it's good to go back to them when you're feeling a little bit down and when you want to be uh, motivated, you want to be surrounding yourself with positive, uplifting things. And sometimes you just need to unplug from the job search and take a day off and just nurture yourself. Managing your diet and exercise. Uh, exercise is one of the top stress relievers for um, during in life and in during the job search process. So keep your routines up or start a new one now that you have time. Taking a values test to understand what your top values are and creating a job vision based on your values and setting up a weekly job action plan based on the action steps that you can take each week. And you should be including soulful and tactical practices included in the plan. 
Tactical practices are things that we're all very, very familiar with. But my point of view on this is that you really need to have your ATS proof resume cover letter and LinkedIn profiles ready to go. They're really the basic price of admission to the job search. They need to be updated, and I'd suggest investing in a resume writer and a LinkedIn expert. You've got one right here with Brenda Miller. Joining the job search communities in your local area, especially job search work teams, also industry associations. So you can also be networking with people who are working and people who may be looking for work as well. As well. Uh, a lot of virtual ones are popping up now that are nationwide that are helpful, especially if you're looking for remote work. The next point I put a light bulb by because I feel it's one of the most important and I think it's one thing we all need to take a look at. Take an inventory of your skills, talents, and hobbies that you might want to formulate a side gig that you can do for dollars. And if any of you speak a second or third language, you've got one automatically built in with interpreting. You can do interpreting work. Now, is this going to bring, is this going to bring you in the same kind of corporate salary you were making? Probably not but it is going to give you multiple streams of income. And this is something that's very important for experienced rich job seekers, because as we get older, we have to start thinking about multiple streams of income and just not be reliant on W-2 income, because you never know when that W-2 income is going to go away and it can go away overnight. So something very important to look into. You can also create blogs. You can do things online. There's a lot of things that you can do nowadays to create additional income. And I know the volunteering is also very important. You can meet people through volunteering with your skills time with uh, organizations, and that's a great way to network with people. Two more great books for life changes. Marianne Williamson wrote a bestseller, The Gift of Change. And then Jay Block is an empowerment and motivation coach who I'm actually studying right now with. And he um, has written a great book on the five steps to rapid employment. And uh, both of these are New York Times bestselling books, so I highly recommend both of them. And then, um, actually, I'm very honored to be part of a book that is out on Amazon. Uh, Mission Matters is a marketing company from LA, and they work with entrepreneurs on being authors and, and podcasts. And I'm very pleased to be in Mission Matters Volume 10. And I wrote a chapter called Understanding the Grief Caused by Career Transitions. This book launched in the last two weeks, and we're already number one on the Amazon hot new release list. So very, very honored to be a part of that. And this is my last slide. <laughs> you can take a screenshot of this. This is a little bit about my company, mindfuljobalignment.com. I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching, and we'll be getting into some job search accountability groups and group coaching in the future. And I do work with you on a plan for both the internal and the external parts of job search, and we custom tailor that to your needs and to your lifestyle. So that's everything. <laughs> that was great. I loved how you started by saying, like, just sit back and take it all in. Yeah. And, and I, I think a lot of times when we are in career transition, Diana, we don't give ourselves permission for self-care. Because right. we're like, go, 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 got to find a job, can't deal with all the trauma I just went through. Because the reality of the situation is if you are experienced, Rich, you've gone through a traumatic situation. You've, you've gone through a job loss. And I think, like you said, it's, there's like the stages of grief. There's the stages of job loss. And so many of us identify our, our, our identity, rather, is wrapped around our job, our mm -hmm. role, our company. And a lot of companies say, you're part of the family here. No, you're Your not. family just kicked you out of the house <laughs> exactly. and nobody wants to talk to you and you're not getting invited over for holiday dinners. And by the way, you got to process that and go find a new family. It's, exactly. it's a lot, right? It is a lot. And uh, honestly, on the scope of things that can go wrong in your life, a job mm -hmm. loss is a little bit minor compared to some of the other things that could go wrong. It, it is. But I think so, when you're in that moment, of yeah, you don't feel and that depending way. Depending on where all. you are and the age that you are. I yep. mean, my my last career transition, and I have to think, you ever do that thing where you're doing your math? You're like, how old, old am, I, am I right now? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm 48. <laughs> so I was 42 when it happened. And I didn't get the like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Nobody's going to hire me. I was, I was already interviewing at the time and I ended up finding my job, my own, I created my own job. But I've, I've worked with so many individuals who are going through career transition and you, you, you know, 
you you feel like the company has defined your expiration date before you have. Like I still have value to bring to organizations. Why mm-hmm. is my company throwing me out? Like I'm no longer valuable. And it's a lot to process and go through. And I love what you were saying to Diana about you got to allow yourself to, to feel and process those emotions because otherwise you're going to bring them into an interview mm-hmm. and you're going to find yourself regurgitating what happened and talking bad about your employer and the situation. And, and they, you know, we talked about the first seven seconds. It might be the first seven minutes they're counting Correct. you out because they're like, I can't deal with all of this. This is, this is, I want somebody who's going to hit the ground running and be productive without all of the headspace, you know, that, that this is taking up to occupy. So I want to thank you for, for bringing that up because it is something that can be very challenging. We're going to move into some questions and some comments sure. before we do. So I see Joan is in our green room. So I want to just quickly say hi to Joan, bring her up on camera, and then I'll push her back down into the green room again. But Joan, let me bring you up on screen. Can you hear me okay, Joan? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Perfect. You sound loud and clear. All right. I'm going to put you back into the green room. We'll bring you back in just about five or six minutes. Okay. Sure. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So um, let's just go through on here and I see a couple comments that are coming in. First of all, I see a couple congratulations on the birth of your book. So this book is currently available. Is that right, Diana? It's currently available on Amazon. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm one, I'm one chapter in a, in a book okay. of 10. There will be one coming out with, with me on the front cover too, but that's the awesome. other thing I wanted to announce is I did sign with Balboa Press and okay. I am going to write a full book on the whole thing on a mindful approach to job search. You definitely should because I feel that. like we got mm-hmm. like a little like an appetizer of what yeah. Diana had. I mean, there's like probably a whole there's so much that you have and you have so much passion about this topic, too. And it's funny, Laura, that you say congratulations on the birth of your book. I feel like the process of writing a book is like the process of having a child. <laughs> it's like yeah. there's so many analogies to that on there. Um, so. Let me just see if there are maybe one or two more questions that we're going to bring in here. And I see. Yeah, one. I didn't get to see any comments going through the chat because I was on the other side. So yeah, right. When you're in here, you <laughs> when can you're only in here, you don't them. see the LinkedIn stuff. Yeah, you can only see them when I when you know the presenter. So here we got a Wilson comments a little bit taller, but I'll read it off um, for you. It says, "I left the job in in January as my personal values were no longer aligned to the way that the company was moving." And I've heard this happening with other people as well. And this person says, "I jump right into the job search process, and and she regrets not ha- not taking the time to reflect and reconcile the transition." A- any thoughts on that, Dinah? Or well, you can that? still do it. You can reflect on that at any time. I mean, mm-hmm. I still go, but I still think sometimes about my transitions and, you know, if I, when I didn't know as much, if I would have done different things, but certainly you can still be reconciled. January's fresh. January's only five months ago. Right. So yeah. I think we get so ingrained. This is what I'm talking about. We are so ingrained into this, this process, so to speak mm-hmm. of jumping into the next thing. And you get into all the mechanical things and you're so worried about all the, the resume and everything like that. There's the other piece. So yes, that can be done anytime through, uh, journaling, talking with someone, um, you know, writing things down, thinking about it. We have a, I use a very simple values test from the Taproot Foundation. It's a one pager and you're selecting words and then grouping them. I believe yeah. in simple processes. <laughs> That's good. As simple is good. Simple is absolutely good. And I see a couple of people commenting on this too. And Joan, who's up with the next, actually put this comment. So true, Diana, on having multiple incomes. And a lot yeah. of people like, you don't even think about this because you have a job, you get a paycheck, you have a job, you get a paycheck. And there might be like rumblings of people saying, have you ever thought about doing some project work or doing some of this or doing some freelance? And you're like, you swat them away like flies. No, 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 I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. I don't want that extra income. Um, you know, I think there has to be some openness probably to that. Right, Diana? To there take has, there to, has to be. That's probably the most one of the most important takeaways from this presentation besides the transitions. Um, Robert Kiyosaki writes it very well in his book, Cash Flow Quadrant and Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Mm-hmm. You ha- especially as you get older, as you accumulate your knowledge, you have to have multiple streams of income. However, that's going to look. When you think about it, people who are doctors, lawyers, accountants, nurses, they have jobs past the age of 60 mm-hmm. and 65 and 70. Partners in a law firm, they, uh, people who own their own businesses, they call the shots on their timeline okay so between 40 and 65 you have to be creating and the reason i say that is because in our country at 65 you can get your medicare and you can get your health benefits covered and then you also can supplement with social security if you're getting some kind of a pension maybe from the educational system or your company or something if you're lucky enough 
but you have to be creating that because what happens is and probably the reason why a lot of people are still working and certainly like why i'm still in in the professional arena is because i need to keep getting money coming in absolutely so yeah yeah so you have to have multiple streams going on but i think it's probably the first time you thought about that you swatted it away like a fly too you know you're like no no well, no I, I, the time no. was was not the greatest uh but yeah. uh now i know i spent over a year creating my website and learning about websites yeah so um fortunately the job was still going and i was socking money away as fast as i could but um mm -hmm. yes it, i and when i was younger i was in the elder care i didn't have time but yeah. you have to make time because it's one of those things you just kind of have to think about in the back of your mind mm -hmm. because of the cost of healthcare benefits. And as we age, we become a lot more financially unattractive to a company. Well, and you need, you need the benefits, but you know, it's, it's, it's as with any insurance, we all pay into the system and we should right. be able to access those benefits unemployment or health or otherwise that are in here. So I want to shift gears a little. We're going to do maybe one or two or three more comments, if that's okay. Um, Melissa, I love this because Diana, you were talking about creating like this Zen space at your yep. home where you can mm -hmm. journal. And, and Melissa's saying, when I got laid off, I recycled all of the work files on my desk. It was yep. so freeing. Any thoughts oh, on that? That is, that is definitely freeing. I've done that a number of times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just get rid of them all. Except anything you need for a brag book. Right. And there, there's a few together. things. I will say um, in my, I've been laid off twice in my career and I have like a box of like mementos and things because it was a part of my life. It was a right. part of my history. And I don't want to like, my husband's like, can we throw away that X, Y, Z box? And I'm like, no, every couple of years I'll pull it out and I'll go through and I'll throw a couple more things away. And um, you like, I, I think you need to like allow your, it's like grieve the grieving process too. Like it's too raw when it happens, put it in a box, get it out of sight, out of mind. I have a box now that one of these summers I'm going to have like a bonfire <laughs> And I have certain things that I'm going to like throw like per old performance reviews and things like that, that I'll just get rid of them into the universe and create energy in different directions. Um, and Deborah, I wanted to pull this comment up to Diana, because I know that there are, there are others in the group that feel the same way that they've been laid off multiple times. It's not just yep. a one time thing. And in Deborah's case, she's like, I've been laid off three times. I, each one was totally unique. It had nothing to do with the performance, but I think each of these can still affect you and, and maybe even compound as it's occurring. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I mine didn't have anything to do with performance either. Yeah. So but, it's just uh, business, right? It's like it's where business, business is going. And and there's looking at, you know, the industry verticals and things like that, but there also is a, a spiritual aspect to it that we are being called to do something else. You look at people who stay in their livelihoods for 35 years, never make a move. I know someone like that. He's an attorney, worked 31 mm -hmm. years, has a pension. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's in his right livelihood. His passion was to be an attorney from the age of three. Yeah. So, <laughs> right. That's his calling, know, right? People are like that. They're very successful in corporate America and they're living their passion and their purpose. But yeah. You know, I think when, when we're removed around and things like that, you have to take notice of maybe something else is happening here and I really mm -hmm. should take a look at it. I like that. I, you know, after the last one, I was like, nope, done. I'm never again. Yeah, I'm, never gonna find myself. I'm yeah. like, I'm done. I am out. Meller out. You know. <laughs> um, but I want to just bring a couple more and then we'll, we'll move on to Joan, who's in the green room. Darlene, and I want to reflect on this too. Um, we're glad to hear of your recovery, Diana. Cancer sucks. And I'm glad to hear about that. And condolences on the loss of your mom. And it's Thank nice you. that sometimes um, we need to shift our priorities from work full time to family caregiving full time. Um, and you know, just to reflect on that too, you know, we just passed mother's day and a lot of people don't have a mom anymore. And I right. don't know about you. My mom passed away years ago from cancer as well. And, um, when I get the email newsletters, I'm always looking for the unsubscribe from mother's day communications. And when they don't have it, I just unsubscribe from the newsletter. Cause like, they're going to send me like three more before, like, don't forget mom. I'm like, I don't forget my mom. It's, but it's a painful reminder. So I yeah. just want to reflect on that. And I'm sorry for the loss of your mom as well. Thank you. Um, and then last one uh, is just is reflecting upon the identity uh, conversation. And Claire says a valued friend stated, learn to forgive yourself, even though it wasn't your fault, You nor did you have any control over your situation because you, your job is part of your identity. It doesn't define you as a person. And I think that's a really important point, Diana, and I want to hear your thoughts on it. Learn to forgive yourself, even yep. if it wasn't your your fault. Any final comments on that? Absolutely. You know, it, it, when you really study the landscape of corporate America and what goes on, it, it becomes, it's not, 
it is not you. I mean, I've, no. I've heard this from a couple CFOs and from a good friend of mine who used to work for an insurance company mm -hmm. that it really is f usually fiscal. And, you know, once you're aging and you're taking the benefits and things like that, you become more vulnerable yeah. and uh, it, it, it isn't you and it does hurt. You know, now my last position, I, I could tell it was coming, but I'm going in with, with a different lens now, eyes wide open versus years ago. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I know that once I hit the magic age, I hit in October that um, my friend who was insurance said, watch out now because, you know, yeah. you don't have to be on the books anymore. So yeah, um, yeah it, it's, it's, it's not personal. It's all yeah. business. It's all business. And we got to just look at um, it, the position was eliminated. You know, you were in the position. So your role no longer exists at the company. But I think that's a really important point. So Diana, I just want to thank you so much for being on with us here today. I'm going to pull your profile sure. up on screen. Thank you. And while I'm doing that, can you just remind us, um, what are the services that you offer if someone wanted to work with you directly? Well, I'm, I'm offering a 30 minute uh, discovery call and I'm a little bit flexible on that time as well. If we run over 30 minutes, that's fine. I'm mm -hmm. offering that to a discovery call to see what, what we can do to work together or I can help you with quickly. And uh, I'm also offering if people sign up for the email list, uh, a list of my uh, resources, uh, reading resources for job seekers. Mm -hmm. And um, if you sign up for my email list, I promise you, I will not be spamming you with a million sales funnel emails coming through four times a day at all. If anything, there might be some resources once a month, but it's, it's not going to be that kind of thing, but would love to work with people on that. Um, my contact information is on the, the profile. I'm in creator mode. So mm -hmm. you do have to kick on the more button, click on the more to um, connect, but happy to connect. Um, just send a note, experience rich live on glad to connect with people and please feel free to reach out with any questions or things like that, but look forward right. to working with people one-on-one. -on -one, we'll start with one-on-one. -on -one, and then as I gather a group of people, we may start a, a job search group or a group coaching, but right now it's one-on-one. -on -one. That's great. Well, thank you, Diana. I'm glad that your journey brought us to brought you to us I should say today. I am glad for that. And I know like um, when you're going through things like it, it, it's very painful to go through the transition. That's why I'm so glad you were talking about stress release tips today, because we can't just talk about the image and the doing this and the positive. We got to talk about sometimes like how to deal with all the stuff, the, the baggage well, and the mental stuff too. That's really important. the elephant in the living room when I'm trying to address <laughs> it. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you again, Diana. And I'll make sure to include your resources in the playback. So I'll go ahead and move you to the green room. And will you be able to join us out on the LinkedIn live stream. Yes, to answer I'll go questions. back to LinkedIn live. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Take care. Take care, Diana. And I'll see you on maybe on our next Friday call or the next yes. week after that. I'll after be after. on tomorrow. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. I'll see you then. Thank you. All right. We've got our final speaker coming up and I've been pulling people in screen and off screen all day because I'm kind of running the behind the scenes. It gives me a chance to get a sip of water. And whatnot. But I'm going to stay on with our next speaker. We've got on with us Joan C. Smith. And Joan, you and I actually met through the Job Seeker uh, yes. Friday calls, the Friday VIP Job Seeker office hours, which we do every Friday from 10 to 11 a.m. Eastern time. I will drop the link into chat in just a second. But if you go to mellermarketing.com slash Friday VIP, you can register. So here's uh, here's the backstory of, uh, of how I selected Joan for the calls. I was looking for individuals who have a background in, you know, I have career coaches, career strategists. We had LinkedIn trainers. We had Kenneth Lang. We have image people. And I said, I want to find somebody who works in like an HR role to bring on. So I literally went into my LinkedIn, went into the search bar at the top, put in some search filters, HR and different keywords. And I, I might have put career coach. I'm not sure. But I put in first level connections and I'm like, Joan, Joan's a part of our group. Let's let's bring her on and, and we'll have a great conversation here today. So for those of you who haven't met you yet, Joan, could you tell us a little bit about who you are and kind of where you are right now in your journey? OK, certainly. So thank you for having this amazing um, live -a This has been so good. I've enjoyed all the speakers I've been on all day. Um, I am an HR professional and I'm in career transition, just like most of the people here. I'm open to role, uh, roles like in people ops, uh, human resource specialist, uh, learning and development and training and development. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, because you talked about side hustles and you've been edging me on, I also um, started as a side hustle uh, coaching. As, as I'm a CEO and founder of Premier Career Coaching and I'll be coaching mid-career professional women. So I'm looking forward to growing that a little on the side as well. 
Wonderful. And there was actually one more thing from your profile. I was looking for, um, you know, different types of topics. And I think when I saw HR, it led me to your profile and your profile. Let me actually show your profile real quick as we're talking about this. I'm going to make it a little bit larger too. So it says LinkedIn top voices, top contributors for instructional design, and then training and development, learning. And so there's a large focus on training and development. And when I reached out, we were kind of chatting back and forth about what should we talk about? And I said, how about this whole like learning new skills? Because that's part of what you've had to do through your career journey is, is learning new skills. So we're going to talk today about the importance of learning new skills through training while you are in career transition and where to find some of that training. So let's start off, I guess, with a little bit of your own journey. I mean, when you're going through your your career transition and kind of where you are right now, why why do you think it's important for people to pick up on, on new skills while they're in career transition? Well, um, it's very important because the thing is, and I know some of the speakers have already touched on it, but it's important to stay relevant. And mm -hmm. so as Joey said, and he was a little blunter, really, you know, we can have a lot of experience, but nobody really cares about the experience and, and these types of things. They are looking for how we can benefit them. And one of the key ways that we can benefit or show value to an organization is get training in that targeted industry that we're looking to pivot into or if we're already in the industry, but maybe we're laid off or unemployed, we need to sort of ramp our skills up to show that potential employer that we are relevant in that particular. So that's why training is so important because we want to be relevant. We don't want to be five, 10 years behind because that's mm -hmm. one, one of the main reasons why it's so important. And there's so many options. I know we'll get into that in the conversation, this conversation as to how we can do that without going broke either. Yeah, well, yeah, and that's an important part because when you're in career transition, you're on a limited budget, maybe you've got a severance, maybe you've got some unemployment, you definitely should be applying for your unemployment benefits because you pay into the system. So you should get those out while you're in career transition. But um, yeah, we want we want to be careful that we're managing our budget as we're going through. And there's a lot of expensive training options out there. And there's one to one coaching and there's programs. But there's a lot of free resources that are out there as well. So so talk to us about you know, where can people go to start to look for some training and resources that are maybe low cost or, or even free? Okay. Before I do that, I want to also say that before they do that, if they don't already, because some people may want to, they may be in an industry that they're trying to get out of and they want to sure. go to something that's more their passion. They need to have a strategy because you don't want to just willy milly your training, especially when you have a free window. So with that said, I would say some of the places that you can go and you can get previews, LinkedIn Learning, and the way that you can get some of that training free, well, there are some free mini courses, but you can also do the 30-day trial premium. But again, when you do that, you need to have a strategy and you need to, what I do or what I've done is I've gone through, I've done a search, like you just said, how you searched my profile, did mm -hmm. that in LinkedIn Learning, came up with some trainings. I saved those because you can see how long the trainings will last. And then you can try the print, get a trial premium for 30 days, and then you can take as much as you can within that 30 days. And of course, you can put the certificate on your LinkedIn profile. You can put it on your resume, but you also want to document that elsewhere. You don't want to just depend on LinkedIn or their, their platform to do that. So that's one. Sure. The first one that's inexpensive is Udemy. And the thing mm -hmm. that I like about them is they have frequent sales because I like three years ago, I wasn't working. And when I first started coming to your um, two and a half, three years ago, I was out of work for six months. But um, per person in another career group that I was involved in said, well, hey, they're having a sale on such and such. And even though I wasn't working, I was able to go into my savings and get maybe two or three trainings that were like maybe over 70 or 80 percent off. The good thing that I like about Udemy is that they give you very generous previews. You can get three to six previews. And I don't mean like a few seconds. I mean, anywhere between five to 15 minute previews. Really? So you'll that's know great. what you're getting into before you even sign up. Okay. And mm -hmm. then another one, HubSpot is a good one, but I know HubSpot is more industry specific, more on the social media side and marketing side. But mm -hmm. again, as Diana um, alluded to and some of the others, even if that's not your industry, we still, as you know, career pivoters, career transitioners, we still need to be quote, social media savvy, whether it's LinkedIn, whether it's Facebook, TikTok. So taking courses from Hubs HubSpot would be very beneficial as well. Mm -hmm. And then also I'm looking here. Also, Coursera, 
that's another good one that has free ones. But then sometimes you have to watch some of the ones because there may be ads with it. So just make sure you're getting something free or inexpensive. So Is it LinkedIn, Coursera, Coursera or Coursera? Coursera, yes, Coursera. Okay, Sorry about that. I'm like it might. They're all so so closely sounding. Like there's Buzzsprout and HubSpot, and there's all these. Like I put HubSpot on there. And then yes. Coursera was the other one. And these are free or low cost or? They're low cost. Some of them are free, like a LinkedIn Learning. Again, if you do the, the premium, you can get as many, but you need to have a plan, like I said, you mm -hmm. know. And also when you get when you do these trainings, post them not in your feet, not only in feature section, but in the cert certificate area, certification area, and then oh, like do that. a separate post. So you want to make sure you're getting all that visibility on LinkedIn and other platforms that will allow you to do that as well. Yeah. And I want to just put, you can do the, I'm, I'm going to put the free trial of LinkedIn premium. Um, I don't know if you remember Megan Vo just from our VIP group, but she was the person who taught me if you go to your local library and I don't know how the process works. I think you got to go up to the reference desk and say, we can, I, I understand we can get access to LinkedIn premium and they can show you how to log in. Do you know how that works exactly? Well, I know there's that's, some that. libraries have, and I know um, because I'm in the D, DMV, DC, Maryland, and Virginia, some of the jurisdictions have mm -hmm. and some don't. Okay. Uh, because, of course, that's something that they pay into. But that doesn't mean you can't find free courses because I've seen crafting free courses on my local library. So that people that are in the sewing, crocheting, knitting, um, yeah. and that's just with the library card. And there's no limit. I mean, that's lifetime access. So even though they may not have like career related things or industry related, you may be able to get some other training. And this goes back to what Linda was saying that type of training can sort of take the stress, uh, de-stress you when you need a break from the job search. So um, yeah. that that's a, re I would, I would ask definitely the library because, or just go on their website. But if you don't see on the website, ask anyway, because that doesn't mean that they don't offer it just because it's not listed on their website. There, so I knew somebody was going to jump into comments. I'm like waiting for someone to say, um, but yeah, go through, through your library card. It sounds yes. like just go up to the reference desk or go up to the front desk at your library and say, Hey, I hear we can get LinkedIn learning courses free. They should be knowledgeable about how to do so. And if anyone else is watching, if you can give us more specific instructions on how to do that, <laughs> feel free. But um, you know, free is always a nice price to pay, right, Joe? <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. And you were talking about showcasing these these training and certifications on your LinkedIn profile. I love how you said put it in your featured section, put it in your certifications. But talk to me too, like what's what if you apply for a job, and one of the requirements of the job is to learn some type of a soft. It's it's to have experience with some type of a software or skill that you don't have. So. What do you think? I mean, should I should we go out onto HubSpot and Udemy and try to find courses and try to learn our way through it and then add that to our LinkedIn? What do you think about that? I would say yes, but also let's say it may be a timing issue. Let's say that let's say you're applying and the deadline is let's say tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And you know, you should still apply, but maybe go out there to HubSpot, since we use that as an example, uh sign up for that free course. And then when you get the phoning the screening interview. You address that and you can say, hey, hey, my previous employer or my current employer, that's not a focus that they're doing. However, so you want to turn that around to let that potential employer know, a hiring manager know that, hey, mm -hmm. this is the training that I signed up for. I expect to be done within the next two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. And when I, you know, that's going to, you know, ramp me up or level me up and have me teed up for this role. So you mm -hmm. want to let them know that you've already been proactive to, to search out the specific training that you'll need to um, perform in that particular role. I think that's a really good point. And I, and sometimes in the Friday calls, I'll coach people, we'll pull up profiles and I'll ask them questions. And a lot of times when we're in career transition, we have a tendency of like over explaining or playing things down or talking about what we don't have versus what we do have. So if, for example, an employer said, um, I see that, you know, as you're aware, we need you to have Canva. I'm just making it up because it's the name of a software. I'm thinking Canva is a part of your experience. I'm not seeing that you use that in your past employer, but you mentioned that you took a course in that. Is that right? So do you have experience using Canva? And I've always told people to respond to that, to say, yes, I've completed training on using Canva and I'm starting to use it on different, you know, projects for my own personal use. And I'm, I'm a quick learner. I learned the software and now I just need the opportunity to put it into place. So yes, I have. Are, are you comfortable with that approach, Joan, or what would you add to that? Yes. And also, like in your case, if you've done, like, like if you've done, for me, I've used Canva for presentations. I can use that and say, hey, I've done this presentation. I've got a, 
a, a brief one. I've got one that's longer, more than happy to forward that to you so you can take a look and see how I've used Canva. Or, you know, even if you have time to do something mini, you know, to showcase, it doesn't have to be anything big. It could be something five or 10 minutes where you can pull some graphics. I know Sue talked about some things earlier on that and just pull that together where they can see real quickly that you afford it after. Again, it depends the timing, depends afford it after. Or if you get a second interview, forward it like maybe the day of a few hours before so they can have a chance to glance at it a little bit before the interview. That's a good point. And a lot of times on their the job application or rather on the job posting, Joan, it will say like, here are the requirements for the position and the technology. By the way, I want to comment. We're getting a little bit of, of feedback in the background and I'm, I'm not sure. It looks like you might be joining us from a mobile device from a phone. Is that right, Joan? Yes, but I also have my, I can turn my uh, LinkedIn live off too. I have okay, that, that might be helpful. And uh, like for me, I always feel like I never make mistakes. I have learning experiences and you know, I always do this on the Friday phone calls too. If there's something that I feel is a little distracting to me. I'm like, I, let's address it. Let's figure out what's going on on there. And um, we are all working in a very different environment nowadays. A lot of us are working from home and sometimes our home Wi-Fi doesn't work and we've got to use our, I mean, you could have a situation where you have to take a job interview on a Zoom call and you've got to work around with that technology. And if there are little hiccups and issues that are happening, like address it. So people are like, what's that clicking noise going on? And I did see one person in comments saying, I'm hearing some clicking in the background. Um, it could just be the connection. So please bear with us. Um, I could have Joan mute and unmute as we're trying to do this. I don't want to do that because we're trying to keep this kind of conversational. So thank you for bringing that to our attention. Yes, we're aware. We're going to try to just barrel through if that's okay. We've got maybe another five to 10 minutes and, and we'll be shifting gears into another topic. But um, we're here right now talking about the importance of learning new skills through training while you are in career transition. And, and Joan's done a lot of this herself. Um, having gone through and, and learning new skills and new software. And we're talking about where to find some of the software, both free and low cost, even like where to find what you should learn, looking on the job posting and seeing what are the skills and requirements they're asking so that you can start putting that into place. So when they ask the question during an interview, do you have experience with XYZ software or skills? You can say, yes, I've started learning it. And I'm looking forward to getting the opportunity to, to put that into place. Um, I want to live, give this back to you again, Joan, because I know that you might have some additional ideas on, on learning new skills or just the importance yes. of picking up new skills. Yes, certainly. Thank you. I would say for those of, cause some of us on the, on the live here are, mm -hmm. we're, we're transitioning and we're working, but we're not in our ideal career. We're, you know, we're in a, what I call a bridge job, something to sort of hold us over to pay the bills. What I would do, if your employer, if you're in a mid-sized to mid to medium size or large organization, if you haven't started, if there's any free training, and most of the larger ones do, take advantage of those as much as possible. Uh, you know, it's all contingent on whatever the process is. Your employer approves it, mm -hmm. and, but have a strategy. We don't, again, we don't want to willy-nilly this if we have free training through our employer. We want to have yeah. a strategy, <clears throat> and we want to be prepared to let that employee know why, you know, hey, I'm, I'm looking to up-level my skills because I'm interested in moving over to this department. So that's, yeah. that's a way. Now, if they don't, we're not going to, like like Joey said, we're not going to get temper tantrum. We're not going to get upset. We're not going to do any of that. We're not going to depend on the employer, but we want to, we want to, if that option is there, we want to take advantage of that first. And the reason why I said that, because I would say about 99% of the training that I've done over the last seven or eight years I've done on my own. I've gone to SHRM, Society of Human Resource oh, uh, yeah. Trainings, mm -hmm. on my own. I've taken my own annual leave, my own vacation. I've done um, all of that, you know, conferences, webinars, some, all of that stuff for free because I didn't have the employer support, but I didn't let that stop me. Right. Um, so, I, you know, I've joined associations, SHRM, the ATD Association of Talent Development, to sort of be around the right people to get the right training. So we don't want to... We, we want the ball to be on our court. We want to control what we can. So I would say that, um, you know, because you can do that. And I also want to talk about, so that's that. But also, yeah. again, the strategy, I can't stress that enough because what I've seen, uh, Brenda, and, you know, those out there, some people have the training, they'll wait till something negative happens, and then all of a sudden they want to do something. Or they'll say, yeah. oh, why, my boss isn't doing this. My boss won't let me do this. Well, why are you depending on them? Right. I mean, OK, that happened. Let's take it the way it is. Let's take our deep breaths, you know, de-stress from it and, you know, do what you have to do. 
And then we need to move on. Well, how, what is the next step that I need to do to get this training? If this is what I really want, we're not going to let a no stop us. And so that's, a, that's a lot of, a lot of what we've talked about here is mindset related. Um, yeah. We have to, you know, shake the dust off and get our minds focused to where, okay, yes, this happened, but I'm not going to let it set me back. So look yeah. for the free ones that we talked about, but if you're already in with an employer, please try to take advantage of what you can there. And we talked, Joey talked about the network and getting on the phone with people that, mm -hmm. you know, ask them if they know any free training, Sue comment about the library. You know, there's, uh, like I said, if you're in a major metropolitan area, like we are, some yeah. of the counties, neighboring counties give free cards. Some of them cost, but then I've got mm -hmm. three library cards from three different counties mm -hmm. and they're all free and I do yeah. use them. <laughs> so yeah. And I think it's important. Like, I mean, I put on here, you know, join professional associations and see what member training they have available. Like a lot of times it's like, it's, it's so obvious once you say it, but you know, might, I never thought about that. I, I work in marketing, look up the American Marketing Association or look at organizations like Together Digital, or, you know, I talked about Toastmasters, which is a public speaking group. And that's, that's another platform for training, very low cost, by the way. Yes. Um, but there's a lot of, and you mentioned SHRM, which is the Society for Human, Human Resource, Resource Managers. Management. Yes. So their training might be steered more towards HR, but by by the way, go to HR events because there are recruiters and hiring managers and HR professionals that are at those events. I think there's so many gems that are, are that are inside of there. And as I was looking down because I'm writing some notes because our next segment, I'm going to talk about my key takeaways um, from all of our speakers from that. And I didn't want to forget yours. And the other people, I was pulling myself off camera so they couldn't see me looking down. <laughs> but I don't want you to feel like I was um, distracted from, from what you were sharing no. with us here, Diana. Not at <laughs> all. Um, all right. So you've, you've talked a little bit about some free training and resources. We've given out different organizations to look at where we can look up those organizations and resources. Let's talk about when do you think it makes sense to pay for training? Um, when, in your opinion, when should you be making an investment? Why, when is it important versus, you know, is, is free good enough? What are your thoughts there? Okay. So sometimes some of the free training is like introductory so mm -hmm. if it's a situation where you feel as if you've, you've gleaned from that, you've, you've put it out there that you've got, but you feel like you need more, or maybe it was, depending on where you are in your, your career, maybe, yes, it was a good refresher. Yes, I've been out of this area for a while, but I need something more advanced. That's where you may want to look into um, something more specific or something that this costs. What I would advise is if you can, Get something that's going to have lifetime access because um, some of the some of the places, which okay. I don't blame them what they're doing now, you know, and I don't blame them, they'll have access. But if they don't have access like you have a longer period, you know, where people can access it, because if I get a training and I only have maybe two weeks of down two weeks to look at it afterwards, that's not going to work for me because yeah. life may get in the way. So, you know, if, if you can get a lifetime situation, that's ideal because you yeah. never know, even when you get in that ideal career, that dream job. You never know when you're going to have to go back. You're going to run into a situation. Uh, hey, my, my boss wants me to do this. Yeah, we covered that in the training. I can go back to my, I can go back to this module and, and look this up or I can go in the group and ask that. So you never know. So again, if it's beyond the level of the scope of what you, what you've already learned, mm -hmm. um, if, you know, look at the access, if you have access to not just the videos, but maybe, um, handouts, PDFs, things that you can, as you grow um, and grow and evolve. So that's what I would say. That's awesome. So I, I we're going to, we're going to change gears a little bit here. We're going to maybe open the conversation up to questions and comments from the audience. And I'm already seeing a few that are coming in here. And let me just take the first banner off so you can see comment below if you have a question or a comment for Joan. And let's just pretend the sounds that we're hearing is popcorn popping and there's popcorn being created yeah, in the back. <laughs> yeah, I heard it a little earlier too, right before I came on. So I'm like, I didn't that's know okay. Was and what, so I apologize. sometimes there's tech gremlins out there, Joan, and we can't figure. So let's just pretend the popcorn poppers making popcorn people and we're at the popcorn part of the afternoon. <laughs> I'm just gonna, yes. we're just going to push on through. It's all good. It's all good. Um, there was a comment made from Jeffrey. So I want to pull this up. Jeffrey, hey, how are you doing, sir? Nice to see you. And Jeffrey says there are meetup groups that focus on specific tech learn and networking at the same time. Um, I think that's a really great tip. There's a lot of networking groups out there that kind of also dual have dual purpose. And Joan, I don't know if you've attended any of these yourself or if you want to talk about the importance of networking as it relates to training. 
I have. Thank you, Jeffrey, for bringing that up. Yes, um, their meetup groups are very good. Some of them do have like a small cost because they have administrative things that they have to handle or if they're renting a room or something. But that's a that's a great idea. Um, searching those out and getting on their list because I am on a list for um, several meetup groups. So when they have an event, whether it's virtual or whether it's um, in person, I do get the vacation and I can sign up if it's something that's relevant or something that I'm able to attend. So that that's a great idea. Uh, some mm -hmm. some places aren't, or some not some places, some industries aren't meeting back up yet. I know some of the groups that the areas that I'm interested in are kind of dormant, but I still stay up on their list because you never know when they're going to resurrect the group back up. And that's so true. as long as mm -hmm. they haven't shut it down, then I'm going to stay on it. So that's a great idea. So thank yeah. you for bringing that up. All right. And here's another one. This was maybe a little bit of a Wilson comment where it's a little bit of a taller <laughs> comment on here. But Wendy, thank you so much for your comment, Wendy. Wendy says, industry organizations like PMI, SHRM, et cetera, have low and no cost options. Also, you can look at some technical companies and many will run specials and provide free courses. To your point, Joan, they run throughout the year. Maybe they don't have it now, but they have things that are running up later. And sometimes they don't give you an official certification. Sometimes there's a certificate of completion but they do give you some of that knowledge. Did you want to add anything onto that, Joan? Yes, I agree. And Sherm, Sherm is a good one, if, you know, if you're a member now. It is, they did recently go up in February. So, um, yeah. but sometimes they do offer free events like webinars and things like that that you can go on. Like, like Wendy said, you may not get a certificate, but you can certainly put that on your resume or put that on your LinkedIn that you attended. And it mm -hmm. always looks good, yeah. So thank okay. you for that. That's very oh, good. This one's even taller. We're going to have to look over the very, very top. I'll, pu I'll pull this down <laughs> as soon as I read this. But um, Linda says, if you are on, and, and Linda, this is not a criticism of you. This is a criticism of StreamYard. I wish they'd show this differently. But it says, Linda says, if you are unemployed, underemployed, you should also check for WIOA grants. I'm not sure what that's, that means, but if you could spell that out, oh, yeah. Linda, that'd be great. Oh, yeah. To cover specific oh, yeah. training needed for the job you want, there's a federal grant administered through your local unemployment office. Not all programs courses are covered, but it's a resource to check out. So thank you for that advice, Linda, because yeah, there might be there might be grants out there that are available. For yeah, people. I was going to say, I used to work in employment services. They used to call it um, the Workforce Investment Act, and that, now they changed the name a few years back, but yep. she's right. The only caveat to some of it is you do have to either be drawing unemployment or have drawn unemployment, but right. you know, it's still worth a try. You never know because those, those are state funded or federal funded and they do have trainings as well so thank you for yeah. adding that linda i appreciate that yeah and hey if you don't ask the answers always no right and and if you don't yes. tap into the resources you're not going to get the benefit of the resources so yeah. exactly all right so i think people liked my popcorn comments because <laughs> sue's like i want popcorn um meryl says popcorn for all i found this really great popcorn it's this company called quinn q u i n n and they have this rosemary and sea salt butter. They're so good. And they're like natural blends. Now I'm going to get popcorn. I'm going to probably have some popcorn tonight to celebrate a great event here. Um, and Laura, thank you for, you know, Laura's saying, thank, this is an example, how to keep going. And I think this can apply to you as a job seeker as well. How do you keep going when there's a tech hiccup that happens? You address it. Let your, your interviewer know if there's a tech hip up hip that's happening. Like sometimes you'll go into an interview and your Wi-Fi goes out. Let them know. I mean, like, get on a better Wi-Fi connection. Sometimes you can't control when the cable company accidentally cuts a line or when there's a winter storm or things. But I think you you just need to allow your, in this case, I want to allow you, my audience, to know that, yeah, we're aware of it. It's the popcorn maker, you guys. It's the popcorn maker making the noises. And you got to just kind of roll with it. So yes. um, on that note, Joan, I want to pull up your LinkedIn profile up on screen. And let me pull up your LinkedIn URL as well. I think there was someone looking for you and he got, uh, poor David. David Mills was like, where's Joan on LinkedIn? And everybody was like messaging him. And he's like, okay, I got it. I found her already on here. Um, as I pull this up, Joan, are you open to connecting with individuals that visit your profile? Yes, I am. Thank you. I am open. Just if you could leave a quick note, a couple have already had, cause I've been on the day. Just let me know that, that you were in this, um, in this virtual event and I'll be happy to connect also. Thank you so Wonderful. much. Wonderful. And if Joan, if, if people wanted to work with you, do you work with individuals one-on-one -on -one, or do you have any resources or anything that you'd like to share with us? Yes, I have a resource that I include. It's called jump, jumpstart your job search. And it's, um, two or three underutilized uh, sites that are free that people may, may not think about that they can use to get industry research, you know, because even with the training, 
you know, there's other free trainers. Even the federal government offers free trainings on different sites like uh, DOL.gov. They offer free training and some of the other federal sites, a lot of it that we don't even know about because you don't hear it mentioned a lot. So yeah. I have a little resource for that. And I have I, I did include that. And also um, yeah. my I link career, Premier Career Coach in the Facebook group. That can be, mm -hmm. it's not a group, like a private group, but it's a business page that can be liked and followed if you'd like to follow me there. And then I also okay. included my Calendly link um, to anybody who wants to do um, like career chat. So awesome. all of that will be available. Well, that's so generous. And by the way, I had the wrong URL. I don't know if anyone noticed that. I noticed that. I looked down and like, yeah. wait, that's okay. Diane Stevens. It's not Joan C. Smith. <laughs> <laughs> so I got that corrected. So make sure that you visit Joan's profile if you're interested in connecting with her. Joan, thank you so much for joining and thank you for sharing all those resources. I will include those um, in the, the playback area for our folks that are registering. So thank you so much for joining. Yeah. Are you able to go into the chat to see if there's any questions or yes, comments? Yes, I am. I'll, be, I'll come off here and go back in the chat. Thank you so much. All right. Wonderful. Thank you, Joan. I'll remove you from screen here. Now the pressure's off, Joan. You can go and relax. And um, the, the great thing about today for all of you, as I pull together this awesome lineup of speakers and I asked them to, you know, bring their resources and, and share with them tips. And for me, I mean, it was, I don't want to say it's easy work pulling together an event like this, but I was thinking about this last night. I wasn't preparing the presentation today. I was just kind of the organizer behind the scenes of bringing all these people together. So if you enjoyed the event, please do make sure to reach out to the speakers and connect with them. And I do want to remind you, if you're interested in getting the playbacks and the resources that they were sharing with you, you do got to go to the webpage, uh, mellermarketing.com slash Lil Rich, L-I-L Rich, L-I-L Rich. L-I-L stands for LinkedIn Live. And then Rich could be, because we're here today, talking about uh, you know all these great resources of you are an experienced rich job seeker. And um, I don't even know if I heard of that, if I created it. I don't know. I just I like the way that it it reframes where we are, because if you are in career transition, you're age 40 plus, 50 plus or 60 plus, there are unique challenges that you face that that some less experienced. How do you like how I did that? Less experienced job seekers may not have in terms of what they're looking for in their job search. So I hope that you found today useful. I want to invite anyone who's who's watching to share some of your feedback of things that you learned here today. And um, we're gonna we're gonna end the call probably about another 10 or 15 minutes. And if you stay on till the very end, hold on a second, because I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna do a giveaway of one of my books. If you want a chance to win a free autographed copy of my book, Social Media Pie, How to Enjoy a Bigger Slice of LinkedIn, you've gotta go on the LinkedIn live chat right now and type in the word book. B-O-O-K. -okay. So if you want a chance at winning my book, type in in the LinkedIn comments. I'm going to put this in and put it on screen, um, the word, and then I'll just put in all caps like that book. So got to go into the LinkedIn comments right now and type in the word book. You must be present to win. Okay. So I'm going to call your name and I've got to see you saying yes, and then you'll get the book. I'm going to give away one copy of the book. What I'm going to do though, is just do some quick recaps on the topics. And I want to see your comments. What did you enjoy about today? What are your key takeaways? So I'll pull those up on screen. I want to hear from you because I know there's many people that have been watching all the way since 11 a.m. this morning. And I hope you found great value in today. I hope this made your day. I know we're going into a holiday weekend here in the U.S. And I was really trying to get this in before the end of the month. And I wanted to pull together some different individuals with expertise from so many different areas. I was taking notes. I have a, a notepad. Of course, it's pink. You all know me, my brand color, right? I, I bought these like a while back and I, I was looking for note paper. I'm like, well, I got to use my pink note paper today. So here are a few of my key takeaways. And I want to encourage you as well to go into the chat and share any of your key takeaways. So Kenneth Lang, he was our first speaker of the day. And let me pull up his topic up on screen as I'm talking about what their topics were. Remember, Kenneth earlier was talking about networking on LinkedIn, and he's an introvert, and he was sharing some of his tips on being an introvert and, and networking and even using LinkedIn for your job search. And I loved, I wrote down so many things for people, but there's a couple of specific for Kenneth. He said, think of LinkedIn the same way you think of Google. And LinkedIn is a giant search engine, right? And when you're thinking about it that way, and, and you know, almost put yourself in the minds of a recruiting manager or a recruiter or a hiring manager, they're looking for keywords and phrases and things like that. 
And I'm going to add a little bit of my expertise on here too, because I do LinkedIn coaching. I, I always say I help business professionals and job seekers get a bigger slice of the LinkedIn pie. So if I were to add on to Kenneth's point of thinking of LinkedIn like Google, in your headline field, you need to have at least one of your targeted job titles. Okay. Recruiters are not looking for unemployed and open to work. They're looking for a specific job title. So make sure that that is in your headline field. And I loved how he was talking about if you're struggling with coming up with content, setting up a Google alert for topics. Brilliant. Go to google.com slash alerts and you can set that up. So those were a couple of my key takeaways from Kenneth. If you have anything you remembered from his talk, feel free to drop them in comments. And I'm going to look at your comments in just a few moments here. All right. Next, we had Joey Himmelfarb. Joey puts a smile on my face and Joey makes me laugh and he makes me think. And Joey challenges people and he grabs you sometimes and shakes you and says, stop that. And I think that's important. I'm from the Midwest. And I always joke with Joey that Joey's a, a New Yorker, you know, like the New York, New Jersey, you all know there's a personality that's a little bit more direct than us with Midwesterners. We need that. We need the diversity of thought when we are going through a career transition. And, you know, a couple of the things that I took away from Joey, I always learned so many gems in his talk, but he said, be yourself, but be positive. I think that's really important. You want to be yourself. You want to be your true authentic self as a job seeker. And as you're making yourself, you're marketing yourself to your next employer, you want to be yourself, but you want to be positive. Um, and I loved all the different, like the Debbie Downers, and he came up with a bunch of different names of, of those people. But we want to um, we want to be positive because you don't want to bring that baggage into your next job. You want to be positive and upbeat because that's who people want to work with, the people who are positive and upbeat and who have that inspirational focus. And another gem, there are so many from you, Joey, but another gem that I picked up from Joey was that everyone you know knows 250 people that you don't know. That was brilliant. When you think about that, like, poof, like mind blown, right? When you connect with a new person, that person knows 250 people that you don't know, right? And when you think about that, especially when we when we tap into the power of LinkedIn, the more you grow your network, the more potential reach that you have on the platform for people to see your post, see your profile, know that you're looking, that's an important element, right? And you can really start to, to gain more traction on the platform. And I talk a lot about the importance of growing your network. Certainly, you want to connect with hiring managers and recruiters, but I would say also connect with people in your local geographic area and in your targeted job title, right, because they can provide resources for you. So there's there's a couple of my add-ons on to Joey's talk in there. Um, Sue, and she talked about, you know, so many great, great things that we think of, that we don't think about sometimes when we are in career transition. Her topic was, your past performance is a predictor of your future success. And when we go through a career transition, sometimes we don't think about the fact that we have so many things that we've gained insights and experiences and expertise. And I always tell people, sure, they can take away your job title and your paycheck from you, but they cannot take away your passion for what you do. And they cannot take away all that knowledge and experience and everything that's in your brain. They cannot take that away from you. You carry that with you wherever you go. And I want you to remember that. And Sue was talking about cataloging, cataloging your successes and using her formula. And I love how she created the methodical way of thinking about all of the things, all the projects that you've touched and that great gif on screen where she was sewing all the animated things. I thought was really a brilliant way of doing that. So, um, and there's ways you can sprinkle these things in through your LinkedIn profile as well. And I always talk about optimizing your profile so that when your ideal target audience lands on your profile, they are, are clearly seeing what you can offer to the company, right? What you're going to bring to the table, how you're going to hit the ground running. And after you catalog your successes and you're using those in your resumes and in your interviews and things like that, make sure that you're using some of those successes and you're sprinkling them throughout your LinkedIn resume. That's my add on to Sue's talk there. So that was really awesome. Next, we had Renee. Um, did you love her topic? I loved her topic because Renee was talking about our, our image and uh, she's talking about looking current, feeling confident and getting hired. And I mentioned this when I was chatting with her, but the fact that people create a first impression of you within the first seven seconds, it's, you know, almost as quick, as quick as that snap of the fingers. But if you look dated, they could be coming to the wrong conclusion, which is that your skills are outdated as well. So sometimes we need, you know, like Joey to shake us and say, your clothing's outdated. <laughs> like maybe not literally Joey, maybe someone else, but 
we need to know that what we think is classic might be outdated. And we don't have to overhaul our wardrobe. But Joan was even saying, like, change your glasses. Like, when you go to the optometrist, say to them, you know, before you pick out the next pair, is this, is this a contemporary look? You know, what do you think? Of, like, get their opinion because they look at people all day long, right? And get their opinion on that. Um, and then maybe update some items, update some select items. And if things are feeling more dated, maybe move those out of rotation. Donate those and, and get those out of your closet and start pulling in some new pieces and especially, you know, we don't want to have worn clothing. We want to have fresh attire, even if you're on a Zoom. That was another point that we talked about, what to wear on a Zoom, even if your interviewer is in casual attire. I think it's it's important. And, and one of the points that Renee was stressing is you want to look your best, whether you're in person for that interview or you're sitting in front of the virtual camera. So I think that's really important there too. And um, to add on to Renee, I mean, what I do when I work with my clients on, on LinkedIn coaching is... I will give you candid feedback. And I always ask for permission first. I would say, are you open to feedback? Is it okay if I'm direct with you? And I never do so in a critical way. But sometimes I'll say things like your headshot photo. Um, I'll say it should be current, you know, ideally within the past five years or more current than that. How long ago was your photo taken? And you might have heard me say this earlier. And they're always, they'll always say, oh, it was five years ago, even though I know it was 20 years ago. It looks like it, right? Um, our image, we want to, I mean, we all age. Age is a gift, right? Age is a gift that is given to us. If you do not age, that means you are no longer on this earth. So let's embrace who we are as experienced rich candidates, as experienced rich human beings. Let's put our best face forward. And that's in both the image and also the image that you, the image you portray in person, but also that image that you portray online on your LinkedIn account. And I think having a good recent headshot photo is a good way of doing that. Okay. Um, next, moving on, we had Linda. Did you love her topic? The terrible twos. And I immediately, as a mom, I remembered my my daughter, Charlotte. She had the terrible twos. My son, Joshua, he wasn't as bad. My daughter, I have a book, Reason Sh Charlotte is Crying. That's how bad it was. Inspired by the author, he created Reasons My Toddler is Crying and a bunch of pictures. Toddlers do crazy things when they're in their terrible twos. Charlotte loves the book now that she's 12, by the way. She thinks it's adorable. But Linda was talking about um, the terrible twos of job search. Too old, too experienced, and too expensive. And she talked about some different ways of reframing things. And a couple of the notes that I took down she was talking about if you use the, the term like Rolodex, right, it could be perceived as not tech savvy. And there's even technology changes that have happened related to, you know, how we communicate with people. If you talk about a flip phone, like some people don't even know what that is anymore. Or um, what was the other I'm, I'm blanking on the name of it, the, the other phone where you had like a keypad on the front of it. But technology has changed, right? And and you may be working with people that have never had access to those, like a Rolodex. I remember seeing them on desks. I can't tell you when's the last time I saw one. But here's my advice to all of you. Um, building upon that, if, if you have worked for a while, if you are experienced rich, right, there's a good chance that you have collected a few business cards over the years. And a, a few maybe has an asterisk. Maybe it's more than a few. Maybe you have a Rolodex. Maybe you have a binder of business cards. Maybe like me, you've got a shoebox of cards that you've collected from networking events and things over the years. Look those people up on LinkedIn because you never know where they are now and you never know where the future may lead. You might be able to reach out to them and, and get some jumpstart in your job search, get some conversations started on there. Um, so some really great advice from Linda. I hope you enjoyed her talk. And then we shifted gears and we went into stress relief. And Diana was talking about stress relief tips for job search. And I love when she was talking about um, we need to kind of unload, you know, the grief that we go through, because if we don't, we're going to bring that into our interview. And we're going to bring a whole pile of things that your next employer is not going to want to deal with and they're going to just screen you out. So learn how to work through those emotions, because when you are in career transition, you are going through a very traumatic time in your life. Um, you may need to seek some professional assistance or counseling or, or you know, to work through those emotions because it's a lot in, in, on your identity that you go through when you're in career transition. So be sure to work through that. That was one of my takeaways. And she also talked about, you know, the stages of grief and how they're similar to the stages of job loss. And I think that's an important thing. And I also liked how she talked about creating a, a space like an oasis at home, a quiet place where you can breathe, right? <laughs> Just do yoga, have some water, 
journal and, and, and give yourself grace. That's an important thing because when you're in job search mode, you're going, 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 and it's very stressful and you start to get so tightly wound that will have an impact on your health and your overall well-being. So allow yourself some grace and allow yourself um, the ability to have some stress relief while you're in job search. I really like that topic. I think it's a very important thing for us to all talk about. And then our final speaker, we did a little bit of a facilitated Q&A with Joan Smith and myself, and we were talking about the importance of learning new skills while you're in career transition. And Joan gave us so many great ideas on where to find training. I'm looking at my notes right now. Um, even like we talked about looking at the job posting, and if they are looking for a skill that you don't have, look up and see if you can find it in a LinkedIn learning or a Udemy or you know, find local organizations that may offer training in there. And there's a lot of free and low cost resources that are out there. And she was also speaking to some of you who might be employed, use all the resources that your employer gives you. And I want to add on to that. A lot of organizations may offer, you know, training and certification. They may also offer tuition benefits, right? Um, maybe you haven't completed that master's degree. Do that on their dime, right? Uh, sometimes they'll have caveats that will say you have to stay with the employer until one year after or whatnot. By the way, I talked to a friend in HR and she's like, they usually don't go after you because it costs too much in legal fees. They usually try to use that to scare you right into using it. But I think the point is use all the benefits that they have made available to you if you're working. And if they don't, don't be afraid to look around and ask around because you can find a lot of lower cost and even free training resources that are out there. All right. So those are my takeaways. I want to go into chat to see what your some of your takeaways were. And then we're also going to do a drawing for one copy, a free autograph copy of my book, Social Media Pie, How to Enjoy a Bigger Slice of LinkedIn. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use the generic color wheel for today. So let me just share the screen to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to be looking through chat right now. And if anybody has put the word book next to their name, I'm going to type your name into the wheel. And then I'll do a drawing for one person to win an autographed copy of the book. I'm going to take that off the screen right now while I look at your comments that are coming in. But I will start loading in your names as I see them in here. All right. So it's going to take me just a second to navigate. The, the fun part is when you are um, hosting a StreamYard, unless you have a co-host, you're piloting and co-piloting. So I've, I think I do a pretty good job of telling you guys what I'm doing while I'm doing stuff in the background. Hopefully. Um, I'm doing an okay job with that. If not, bear with me, just like we had the technology with the popcorn earlier. Bear with me as I navigate to your comments because the chat is lit, my friend. It is like 802 comments since we started um, the morning conversation. And I just want to thank all of you for being on um, with me throughout the day today. I have had an absolute blast and I hope that you have as well. So let me just see. Um, Jeffrey has a comment. He says, Udemy has a course sale that ends this evening. Thank you, Jeffrey, for mentioning that. BlackBerry, thank you. Who is the person who said BlackBerry? I'm like the little thing with the keyboard, the BlackBerry. Um, thank you for that. I got I got sidetracked for a second there. But the Udemy, if um, Jeffrey, if you know the code or how we can find that, could you drop that into the chat? That would really be awesome to do so. Uh, Carrie, thank you for joining us today, Carrie. I'm not sure if you were on since the morning or you joined halfway, but at any rate, um, Carrie saying I found today to be so positive and uplifting that you are why I did this, Carrie. Like this is exactly what I was designing this day for when you're in career transition. Um, it's hard. It is a roller coaster of emotions and I wanted to bring some levity and I wanted to bring some insights and I hope that you all gained, um, what, what Carrie is sharing that she gained from today as well. All right. Palm pilots. That's another thing, Meryl. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is a pound sign, number sign, but it's also a hashtag, Al. Really good point. Rotary phones are actually now coming back into style, aren't they? I, I'm seeing like now you can plug them into your, your cell phone and you can like use a handheld receiver in here, right? All right. So let's see. Anybody interested in the book drawing? So this person, it says LinkedIn user and it says book. So I've got to go into the LinkedIn chat to find your name. Unfortunately, if you have your privacy settings locked down, I'm not going to be able to see your name on here, but I can go into the LinkedIn chat where I can see your name. It's going to take me just a second to find that. So I see Neil Isaacs and I'm going to pull my wheel back up on screen as I start to load the names in because then you all can see the names I'm loading in here as well. All right. So I'm going to type in 
this is this is the tricky part. This is like, do not try this at home unless you are an experienced StreamYard. So Neil Isaacs on here. By the way, I was at an event yesterday and there was a um, a, a child named I think about this, David Matthews. And I had to say it because, you know, when you meet a David Matthews, you're like, you know, there's a singer named after you. And he said, yeah, I do. <laughs> but when I saw Neil Isaacs, I was thinking um, I, I, I like I was thinking of like a musician or something. Maybe there's somebody by that name, Neil. I don't know. But you just made me think about that. OK, so I'm going to put Simeon in here as well. And Simeon, you um, you have a very unique first name, so I'm not going to put your last name. I don't think there'll be two Simeons on here. I'm going to guess that there won't be on here. Um, let's see who else we have inside the chat here. And I, I remember, put the word book inside. Right now, um, Simeon and Neil have a 50-50 chance because I'm not seeing anybody else put the word book inside here. Marissa Rizzo, I just saw Marissa in here. So now we're bound to 30-30, right? <laughs> There's three people in, here in chat. You've got to put the word book in here. And I'm giving everyone a moment to type in the word book. Okay, so I see Rick Butkus in here. So let me type in Rick. But because I think I spelled that correctly, Rick, if not, my apologies. Um, Christina G. OK, and what I'll do is after I pull your name, I will message you and get your mailing address. So you don't have to put that inside chat, but it will be a free autograph copy of Social Media Pie, How to Enjoy a Bigger Slice of LinkedIn. Clifford, let's put that in here. Clifford. I'll just put Clifford B in there and shorten this up. I, sh I should have had my intern, Julia, joining, but she's just returning from vacation today and I wanted to be respectful. Um, we all deserve vacations and we, you know, I want to make sure to allow her for that time off and the time to spend with her family. So I'm going solo, but you guys don't mind, right? You guys and ladies. I know there's ladies out there too. Al, okay, Catherine H. Here we go. Here's a few more. Now I'm now I'm finding the part of the chat that has all of your names in here. And I got to wrap this up because StreamYard is going to kick us off if I don't finish this. So I'm gonna do a couple more on here. Uh, Vanna Durga, Vanna Durga. Okay, and I'll put a couple more on here and then we are gonna do the drawing. By the way, if I do not pull your name, you can still buy the book from my website or you can buy it off of Amazon. Um, if you go to mellermarketing.com slash social media pie the book, if anyone would love to drop that in chat, I would be very grateful for you to do that. Um, to help me out a little bit here. Okay, Meryl, I think we're almost at the end. We've got Dion, Stuart, and Mario. I'm going to try to put a couple more names at a time here. Stuart, Mario. Clock is ticking. The stream will stop at four hours, so I've got to finish this up. So we're going to do Robin, um, Carrie, Deborah, and Robert. Robin, Carrie, Deborah, Robert. Okay. I um, think I'm going to have to go ahead and do this wrong because if I don't, I'm a little bit worried that we're going to get cut off in the stream here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw with the names that were up on screen. I don't know if I can make this any larger. Let me see if I can. I don't think I can. I think that's about as large as I'm going to make it. So I'm going to click the wheel to spin the wheel. One person gets a free autograph copy of Social Media Pie, How to Enjoy a Bigger Slice of LinkedIn. I'm going to hold my elbows up so you can see I'm not cheating and picking like a favorite friend or anything like that. This is just completely randomized on here and it looks like the winner of the book is carrie carrie congratulations on winning a free autographed copy of the book social media pie how to enjoy a bigger slice of linkedin carrie are you still on you need to go inside chat right now and say yes if you could carrie and that way i can um, message you back and i can get that book in the mail to you so carrie you got to go into chat right now on linkedin and just say yes if you could and then i've got a post-it note with your name on the front cover of that all right. And I've got like two minutes and then stream ride's going to cut me off um, before we wrap. So I want to thank everyone for joining. Please make sure that you register to get access to the playback by going to mellermarketing.com slash Lil Rich, L-I-L Rich. And probably tomorrow or Saturday, I'll be sending you an email with the playback link with all of the presenter resources and all of the goodies that we share with you here today. My name is Brenda Meller. I help business professionals and job seekers get a bigger slice of the LinkedIn pie. It's been a delight to see all of you here today. I hope you're leaving feeling inspired and informed. Have a wonderful afternoon and maybe we will see you on tomorrow's um, VIP job seeker office hours. Oh, and one last thing I am announcing. Um, my webinars are opening up again. If you're interested in learning more about 
leveraging LinkedIn to find a job. I'm going to drop this into the chat real quick. It's um, three ways to leverage LinkedIn to accelerate networking and find a job. I will drop that into the chat and I'll also put that um, in the comments for you. And that will be in the resources as well. So that will be in there for you. All right, guys, have a wonderful afternoon. Uh, let me see if I can share this with you. I think I can share this real quick. I'm going to share the landing page with you so you can see the name of this. This is three ways to leverage LinkedIn to accelerate networking and find a job. Um, that way, if you're interested in learning more about me and using LinkedIn, do check that out. I'm going to drop that into the chat right now so that you all can check that out. But if you go to mellermarketing.com slash events, I'll have that loaded and it'll also be in the playback. So if you um, did register for the playback and resources, you'll be able to get access to that link and to sign up. And it is in the comments right now. I'm trying to like hit the post, so to speak, <laughs> before our live stream ends. But you can just go to mellermarketing.com slash experience dash rich dash webinar. And you can learn more information about how to leverage LinkedIn to accelerate your networking and find a job. All right, everyone, have a great afternoon. And I look forward to seeing all of you on LinkedIn. Take care and have a safe day.